been here in Moscow, one of the greatest cities in the world and one of the most incredible countries in the world. I love Russia, I love coming to Russia, and I'm looking forward to an exciting week here in Moscow. I'm John Scholl. Okay, I arrived uh, yesterday in Moscow. I'm staying here at the Hotel Ukraine called the Radisson Royal. And uh, it's a great hotel, good service. And I love uh, the city of Moscow. It's, uh, I had a chance to visit uh, several car dealerships yesterday to check out their level of service, several different banks. And, uh, you know, it's really interesting to see the caliber of service in this country. And I hope to make a difference and help the people in Russia become service leaders. today and we're going to share some ideas on how they can become the most customer driven dealership chain in the entire country of Russia and uh, you know it's interesting to come from Minneapolis and the weather is warmer in Moscow than Minneapolis so I'm excited about being here and I uh, love coming to Moscow I'm here several times a year and I look forward to working with companies that want to drive a service culture here in Russia thank you Спасибо. to be here at Rolf. I look forward to my seminar this morning and meeting the leadership team and helping this company become even a stronger service leader here in Russia. I'm John Schultz. Victoria John Schultz. Igor John Schultz. Good morning, John. Good morning, I'm John. Good morning, I'm John. Hi, I'm John. Good morning. Hi, I'm John. Thank you. Good morning, I'm John. Hi, I'm John. Good morning. Hi, I'm John. Ukraine Show является американским специалистом в области культуры сервиса, является автором книги. Это единственный человек в мире, который занимается непосредственно клиентским сервисом уже на протяжении 38 лет. Является автором большого количества бестселлеров. Ну, наверное, там, с одной стороны, нам с вами, судя по тому, что рассказывает Слава Викторовна, еще есть куда расти. Но, тем не менее, есть такие книги, как... Такие книги, такие книги, как... Да, превосходный, да, первоклассный сервис как конкурентное преимущество, лояльный клиент или как превратить разгневного покупателя счастливого за 60 секунд, самостоятельный сотрудник как ключ успеха и многие другие. На самом деле, я думаю, что если вы там в Google или в любом поисковике зайдете имя этого человека, вы увидите, что у человека как минимум легендарный. Безусловно, его мнением интересуются крупнейшие и американские, и европейские, как я только что поговорил, компании и СНГ, и мира, и вот только что он прилетел из Казахстана, вот только что мы с ним переговорили об этом. Он является членом, членом Национальной ассоциации профессиональных ораторов. Это очень круто, потому что вы знаете, что очень часто люди, которые переводят, точнее рассказывают о своем имени и то, как это звучит потом на русском языке, это достаточно скучно. Мне почему-то кажется, что сегодня скучно не будет. Работы Джона переведены на 11 языков мира. И, соответственно, как я уже сказал, это единственный человек, который фактически последние там, несколько десятилетий сфокусирован только на, предоставлен... на консультировании по клиентскому сервису. Давайте попробуем получить максимум от сегодняшнего рассказа. Очевидно, что это будут 
тезисы, и, как вы знаете, любое обучение, оно скорее является объемом знаний, но не навыков. И тут, наверное, каждый должен будет решить сам, что он для себя из этого возьмет, что будет делать, или что останется очередной какой-нибудь папочкой с обучением на полочке, чтобы стол не шатался еще. Давайте поприветствуем человека. Светлана, thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here in Moscow with Rolf. I had a chance to visit three of your dealerships yesterday. Uh, what I find is that you have beautiful cars. You have beautiful receptionists. You have nobody waiting on customers. So apparently on a Tuesday morning about 11 o'clock, nobody wants any sales. Ну и при этом не очень много клиентов вот, на сегодняшний день. Then I went to a competitor of uh, Mercedes. Sorry. Sorry. Никто не ждет вообще ваших дилерских центров, ваших клиентов. Это очень важно, потому что на самом деле, что мы вчера видели, это абсолютное нежелание, не вообще не умение не подойти, не обсуждать. Никто не подошел к Джонсу. See the first step in increasing sales, somebody's got to wait on the customer. So I went in three of these dealerships, a Hyundai, a Ford, and a Mazda, and I'm going into the cars, I'm sitting in, I'm opening up the doors of every single car. Not one person in all the three of your dealerships approached me. That's not a good sign. Первый шаг для того, чтобы увеличить продажи, это необходимо, чтобы ваших клиентов кто-то ждал. За вчерашний день я был возле автомобиля, сидел в них, и всячески пытался привлечь это внимание. And then I went into a Mercedes-Benz dealership and looked at all their cars. And a sales manager approached me. In the U.S. he wouldn't survive one day. В Америке такой специалист не претендовал бы одного дня. I think he was scared of his own shadow. Мне кажется, он боялся собственной тени. And he couldn't make any decisions. He said, "You can talk to my manager." Он не мог не принимать не мог принимать никаких решений. Because I picked out the most expensive car that I liked. Можете поговорить с моим руководителем. I wanted to find out what my best price was. И я выбрал самый дорогой автомобиль, который там был, и не мог узнать по какой цене я могу эту машину купить. Это наш Mercedes. Нет, это автопром. So let me share some ideas with you on how Rolf can improve its customer experience. So Vatlana talked about your NPS score and doesn't trust it. Svetlana говорила о том, что у нас показатель NPS, которому мы сами не очень доверяем. I uh, flew on Air Astana from Amadi to Astana and back a few days ago. Я летел в компании Astana несколько дней назад. And I made the mistake of completing their survey. Uh, yeah, yes, you couldn't get out of the survey. You had to answer every specific question they had. It probably took me 15 minutes. Uh, and I don't know if any of you have ever flown Air Astana. In the air, they're great. The problem is getting in the air. Проблема в том, чтобы подняться воздух. You know, from the, you know, from Moscow, uh, their ground operations, they don't fly on time, they cancel flights left and right, but their survey has nothing relevant to the problems that Air Astana has. Ну, то есть сама компания неплоха, но все, что связано с обслуживанием клиентов и с обслуживанием процесса компании, очень So typically we do surveys to survey stuff that's not relevant. The customers don't want to hurt your feelings, so they lie. Hurt your feelings, so they lie. Для того, да, для того, для того, чтобы не не заставить вас почувствовать себя плохо, да, они просто лгут. So, are you going to move the Russian slides? Yes, yes. You want a competitive strategy? 
Я буду говорить о стратегии конкурентного преимущества. То, что позволит вам отличаться от конкурентов на рынке. Мы говорим о том, что преимущество должно быть таким, которое будет практически невозможно скопировать. У Рольфа самый сильный бренд в сегменте продажи обслуживания автомобилей в Москве и Петербурге. Я бы хотел, чтобы вы поняли, что гораздо важнее иметь бренд самый сильный в сфере клиентского обслуживания клиентского сервиса. Есть несколько принципов, о которых я бы хотел вам рассказать. Number one, you got to value, train, and develop every employee. Очень важно, чтобы вы ценили, обучали, развивали всех сотрудников, которые. At your dealerships, you never know what door a person is coming in. Вы точно не знаете, когда к вам зайдет клиент. They might come in just to get an oil change. They might come in to just get an oil change. Они могут зайти просто для того, чтобы поменять масло. They might come in to have a repair done on their car because they had an accident. Они могут обратиться к вам, поскольку нужно отремонтировать автомобиль после ДТП. Может быть, они хотят Может быть, хотят машину с проверкой. Существует много вариантов того, по какой причине обратиться к клиенту. Мы точно не знаем, какое обращение будет с ним. На ресепшене у нас есть разные новогодние. Those are two or three young women, attractive. Да, всегда на ресепшене есть несколько девушек. That are ornaments. They don't do anything. Но сами имеет смысл в том, что они выступают в качестве украшений. But they're there. Сами по себе они ничего не делают, но просто там присутствуют. So if you're gonna increase sales and have a stronger brand, the first person that touches a customer, that experience has to be awesome. Если вы хотите действительно улучшить свой сервис, то первый человек, который видит клиента или с кем клиент вступает в контакт, должен создать великолепное впечатление. Одна из важных особенностей Москвы, что здесь очень много красивых девушек. Но гораздо важнее, чтобы люди еще улыбались. Putin has a law. Putin, your president, okay. has a law. Yes, hello. That says nobody in Russia can smile. No, So as I go through your dealership, everybody looks like the road came to an end. Everybody's breaking the law now. Yeah. Like we just passed So the first element in the customer experience, I think, is that you have to smile. Я считаю, что первое правило в клиентском сервисе это то, что все должны улыбаться. Второе это то, что вы должны э, показывать. No Может быть, в тех трех дилерских центрах, которые я посетил, не было продавцов. Nobody smiled. Никто не улыбался. Никто не сказал добрый утро. Никто не предложил свою помощь. Okay. So, не знаю, может быть, я выгляжу бедно. So the second thing is we got to focus on the total customer experience. Мы должны фокусироваться на всем клиентском опыте. So some of you are the managers of your dealership, some of you in charge of body shops, repair. You don't know where the customer is coming in, but the experience has to be awesome. Вы точно не знаете по какой причине или когда в следующий раз к вам обратится клиент, но совершенно точно должен быть уверен, что опыт этого общения у клиента будет потрясающим. And then you have to master the power. И следующее, то, что вы должны развивать, это вы должны расширять полномочия ваших сотрудников. Every employee in your dealership has to be able to make fast decisions in favor of the Каждый клиент, каждый сотрудник в вашем дилерском центре должен иметь возможность принимать быстрые решения. Not their manager. Not their manager. Не их руководители, а сотрудник, который непосредственно с клиентом работает. And then you have to eliminate costs and pass the savings on to the customer. И вы должны как можно больше экономить для того, чтобы как можно больше отдавать клиенту. Price is very important to customers. Цена очень важна для клиента. Now I bought a lot of cars in my life, and I think no matter how good of a deal I got, I still got screwed. 
Я, у меня было очень много автомобилей за мою жизнь, неважно, насколько хорош был дилер, я все равно получал хорошую цену. I think in your industry you make money on everything. В своей индустрии, в автомобильной, вы зарабатываете деньги практически на все. So, I buy based on service. Я покупаю, исходя из того, нравится ли мне обслуживание клиента. I always try to get the right price. Я всегда стараюсь получить хорошую цену. But I don't shop dealerships for price. Но я не выбираю дилеров по цене. And then you gotta eliminate stupid rules and policies. Очень важно избавиться от глупых правил и процедур. We have a lot of crazy rules in Russia. Stupid rules. В России очень много странных правил и процедур. They piss off the customer. Они бесят клиента. We were leaving your dealership yesterday, and the guy wanted Roman to show the papers for his car in order to get out of the lot. Вчера, когда мы выезжали с парковки, нам пришлось показывать документы для того, чтобы покинуть это. If you did that in a dealership in the United States, the person would never come back. В Америке, если бы это произошло, то вы бы этого клиента больше никогда не увидели. Then you got to reduce the friction. Вам очень важно следующий пункт – это убрать барьеры. Make it easy for people to buy. Make it easy for people to do business with you. Убедите, что вы не создаете никаких барьеров и упрощаете процесс покупки у вас или обслуживания. You got to dramatically improve the speed of everything you do. Вам нужно очень сильно увеличить скорость всего, что вы делаете в обслуживании. I heard this morning that it takes three hours for an oil change. Я сегодня утром услышал, что замена масла занимает три часа. That's incredible. Это потрясающе. Oh my God! How can you be so slow? How can you be so slow? I mean, at most an hour, ninety minutes, or thirty minutes, or twenty minutes, but an hour, three hours, nobody, nobody would ever take three hours. You don't need to be booked in Moscow for three hours. So whatever door they're coming through, you could be losing customers because they say for an oil change I can go somewhere else, I can get it done in thirty minutes, and at the dealership. Yeah, Ralph, it takes three hours. В зависимости от того, по какой причине клиент обратился к вам, вы можете, в принципе, потерять человека, потому что если человек не согласен с тем, чтобы менять масло в три часа, может пройти конкурент. And then you have to master operational excellence, like Amazon has. Вам нужно обладать мастерством операционной деятельности, знать, как компания Amazon. So as I go through the slides today, look for principles. I'm teaching principles. Сегодня во всех слайдах я буду показывать основополагающие принципы принципов. When Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Steve Case from AOL, and Jerry Yang from Yahoo were asked, "What's the source of your competitive advantage?" You got to move the slide. Three people, who were mentioned, John, Jeff Bezos, company Amazon, Steve Case, American Online, Time Warner, company Jerry Yang from company Yahoo, asked him, "What's the source of your competitive advantage in your company?" So he said, "Creating a customer experience." Superior to anything else my competitors can create. Ответ был такой, что создание клиента такого сервисного опыта и опыта клиентского обслуживания, который мои конкуренты не смогут повторить. So Sergey is not here, Petrov. But what's the source of Rolf Group's competitive advantage? I don't know. Здесь не критический вопрос, в чем преимущество конкретно преимущество компании Rolf. I agree with Svetlana. That if you can build a brand around the customer experience, you can really dramatically grow Ralph. I agree with Svetlana that if you focus on the client service, you can look at the business world from a different angle. From what I understand in St. Petersburg and Moscow, the people that buy cars are basically rich people. Am I correct? То, что я понимаю, как минимум в российской действительности, люди, которые покупают автомобили, как правило, люди не бедные. They're not poor people. Now everybody in the U.S. has a car. But here in Russia, a car is much more expensive. And there's not poor people coming into your dealerships. Now the reason I say that, the reason I say that, is that people with money have a higher expectation of service. Что люди с деньгами имеют гораздо больше, более высокие ожидания от обслуживания, чем люди не богатые. In the United States, if I walked into a dealership, looked at every car, sat in the car, and nobody waited on me. Если в Америке я зашел, посидел в автомобиле и 
Нулевая вероятность, что я соглашусь иметь дело с таким дилерством. Потому что ты понимаешь, что если на начальном этапе покупки автомобиля такое отношение, то дальше при обслуживании... Toyota did some research and it showed that 93% of the people satisfied with sales and service will buy their next car from the dealership. Three, 3% of the people that are dissatisfied with sales or service will buy their next car from the dealer. Now, If you got satisfied customers, you should never ever lose a customer at Ralph. Если вы действительно хотите, чтобы у вас были удовлетворенные клиенты, вы просто должны перестать их терять. Because you represent 23 brands. Потому что вы представляете 23 бренда. You got everything. У вас есть все это. So it'd be very easy to hand it off if a guy says, "I really want to get a Lexus. I'm tired of the Toyota." Потому что вам не трудно продать человеку Lexus, если он говорит, "Мне надоело Toyota." In Minnesota, where I live, there are some major dealerships. There's one called Luther. I would never buy another car from them because I had a bad experience with dealerships. Impacts all the brands. You have one shot with the customer. You have one advantage here in Russia. You have one advantage in Russia. You have one advantage. Everybody's used to bad service. So you're able to get away with it. They've never seen awesome service. So let me walk through some steps to achieve awesome service. Давайте я расскажу о нескольких шагах для того, чтобы достичь удающегося сервиса. First of all, you got to create customer-friendly systems and procedures, so it's easy to do business with you. Пункт один создание клиент-ориентированных систем политики процедур. You have to master speed. Вам нужно значительно улучшить скорость всех процессов. People don't want to sit at a dealership for three hours for an oil change. Людям не нравится сидеть три часа и ждать, пока поменяют. They want things fast. Then you've got to reduce costs. Because price is still important to customers. If you eliminate stupid policies and rules, you can eliminate costs. Because Igor, when you have stupid policies and rules, then you have to have a manager that supervises the implementation of those stupid policies who charges more money. You have to eliminate underperforming employees. In most companies, if you're dead, you still get paid. Во многих компаниях, если ты практически мертв на работе, продолжаешь получать зарплату. I wouldn't be surprised in your dealerships that there's two or three employees that have died and you still pay them. Я не удивлюсь, если в вашем дилерском центре есть люди, которые физически умерли, но почему-то продолжают получать зарплату. You need to give them a burial and send them to your favorite competitor. Ну, можете просто сделать себе одолжение и помочь им трудоустроиться к своим конкурентам. In Russia, the perception is that a lot of employees improves customer service. В России есть убеждение, что много сотрудников это и есть клиентский сервис. So most companies in Russia have too many employees. По сути, в большинстве российских компаний слишком много сотрудников. I wouldn't be surprised that each of your dealerships has anywhere between 10 to 30 percent more employees than a comparative American dealership. Не удивлюсь, если в среднем по сравнению с американскими компаниями у вас на низких позициях больше. Это стоит вам денег. If you put four employees in a cockpit of a plane, you'd have a lot of crane plane crashes. Если вы разместите слишком много сотрудников в его компании в кабину пилота, самолет скорее всего упадет. So I just saw a lot of employees, but a lot of them weren't doing much yesterday. 
Ну, по сути, мой вопрос вчера говорит о том, что слишком много сотрудников не имеет никакого отношения к конечному Обучение всего персонала обслуживания клиентов каждые четыре месяца и каждый раз по новой программе. With my Lexus, I'm supposed to have an oil change, I think, every 5,000 miles. По своей владе Lexus, я должен заменять масло каждые 5,000 миль. If you don't do maintenance on your car, you're going to have a problem. Если ты не будешь обслуживать свой автомобиль, скорее всего, с ним что-нибудь начнет происходить. Well, if you're not developing your people, you got a problem. Если вы не будете развивать своих людей, скорее всего, вы тоже столкнетесь с проблемой. The most important person in each of your dealerships is not Svetlana, and it's not you. Будьте удивлены, но в вашем дилерском центре самые главные люди не Светлана и не вы. It's that little important. От них не так много зависит. Это ваш сад. And then you got to build a leadership team, which we got here, that's focusing on the service strategy. So there's five key ingredients necessary for creating this breakaway service. Существует пять основных мероприятий, которые ингредиентов, которые необходимы для создания уникального сервисного опыта. One is speed. Первое это скорость. I don't care if it's buying a car, it's getting an oil change, it's body shop. Doesn't matter. Speed is important to customers. Не важно, о чем мы говорим, о покупке автомобиля, об обслуживании, о скорости. Это то, что важно. And then you got to have less friction. Меньше препятствий. Это второй пункт. You got to make it easier for people to do business with you. Вы должны убедиться, что максимально упростили возможности клиентов делать бизнес с вами. Price is important. Цена по-прежнему важна. And then fourth is you got to have empowerment. That means employees got to make quick decisions in favor of the customer on the spot. Четвертое переведено к делегированию, но правильно это читать как расширение полномочий. Следующий пункт это качество. Что бы вы ни делали, чем не занимались качеством. Сколько вы за автомобиль не платили, все равно с ним что-нибудь происходит. И тогда человек приезжает вам в сервис. И если сервис плохой, то вы должны помочь. Если обслуживание автомобиля хромает, то у вас еще больше проблем. Ну, если только у всех равномерно, они так же плохо. Вопрос, который можно задать, ваши сотрудники обучены политикам, правилам и принципам. Я обратил внимание, что большое количество сотрудников Nobody raised their hand when Svetlana said, "Do you know what our mission statement is?" Никто не поднял руку и не сказал ответ на вопрос Светлана о том, в чем миссия. So you got to understand the principle at each of your dealerships is to take care of the customer to their satisfaction. Для того, чтобы обслуживать клиентов, вы должны оставить понимать основополагающие принципы. The problem with customer service is twofold. Проблема с клиентским обслуживанием следующая: We don't trust our customers. Мы не доверяем нашим клиентам. Secondly, we don't trust our employees. So we create more rules and policies and procedures because we don't trust either of them. If you want to become really big and powerful, then you got to learn to trust both. So what's the real cost of losing customers for Rolf? Так что же является истинными потерями для компании, если не ориентироваться на клиента? So 68% потока клиентов происходит из-за плохого отношения к клиентам. Получается, что 68% клиентов, которые вас покидают, они входят из-за качества обслуживания. 95% клиентов, переживших негативный клиентский опыт, никогда не жалуются. 13% клиентов расскажут 20% друзьям, в то время как довольные клиенты только пятидесяти. Привлечение нового клиента обходится в пять раз дороже, чем сохранение существующего. A one percent cut in customer service problems could generate an extra two million dollars in profits for a medium-sized company over five years. В данном случае речь идет о том, что если снизить на один процент количество претензий удовлетворенных удовлетворенных клиентов, то на отрезке пять лет вы заработаете дополнительно два миллиона. So if we look at the customer's lifetime value for Rolf, если мы посмотрим на 
customer life value. How, how do you take care of loyal customers? Frankly, anybody that buys a car from you should be called a loyal customer. Very few people buy cars in Moscow or St. Petersburg. If they've spent money with Rolf, they ought to be considered a king or a queen. And then you have some people that come back and buy a new car every year. Am I correct? Am I right? Yes. I mean, I can't believe anybody <laughs> in the U.S. they do that. I think it's just crazy. So I think it's, you know, I don't know why people would buy a new car over here. But they do. It's status, it's image. Does that person feel treated like royalty? Have they fallen in love with Rome? Roman, in my bag, in the very front, I have the charger for my computer. It's ready to die. How many know your defection rate? We, we, we know the retention rate, so we... It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what is your retention rate? See, you got a person that could come in just for oil changes. They can come in just to fix a car because they You never know. So how do you measure and define the cost of zero defections, lifetime value? You got to get to this slide. Do you have this yeah, slide? yeah, I will. No, you got to go back. We don't have it. Is it 20 years? Let's say it's 20 years. Every time a person does business with you, they spend more money. The price of a car in 1990 is different than today. And then, uh, so how much do they spend every year? And then you look at the profit. How much profit does a loyal customer generate every year? The profit is significantly more every year. На самом деле ваш доход увеличивается год обзор. Always more. Всегда больше. Then you total up the sales and you total up the profit and you got one hell of a lot of money. Если вы будете суммировать продажи автомобилей, обслуживание автомобилей, ну и дальнейшую продажу, это очень много But most people don't know the value of a customer. Но большинство бизнесов не знают истинную денежную ценность. So we fall on our principles, not our principles, we fall on rules and policies and procedures. So I bought a car, and I can't remember the brand, and they, uh, I went in because the battery was, the car was constantly dying, the battery was dying. They charged me something like $113 to evaluate it. And they said to fix it. I brought the car back a week later. And uh, they said it's the battery. And they were going to charge me $25 for the battery, to look at the battery. I said, I'm not going to pay the $25. They said, if you want your car, you will pay the $25. So I paid the $25. I never did business again with that dealership. Now, I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm not a good driver. So this car, I think it was a Buick. My wife doesn't think it was a Buick. I think it was a Buick. And the front end was very low. In three different times, I demolished the front end of the car. 
три раза я разрушал переднюю часть юбки. Cost five thousand dollars each time to fix the front end. И каждый раз это стоило пять тысяч долларов за то, чтобы отремонтировать автомобиль. This dealership never saw any of that money. Дилерский центр никогда не видел эти деньги. They were happy because they got their twenty-five dollars. Имеется в виду, что он мог отремонтировать свой автомобиль этого дилера, но так никогда к ним не вернулся, поскольку. But they lost fifteen thousand dollars. Plus, I would have never bought another car from that dealership. Only. Three minutes, five minutes from my home. Five minutes of my old home. Находится дилерский центр за причин, по которым заставил заплатить 25 долларов. Он не раз устроил такую случайность. Но с 15 долларов не прошел. They had policies and procedures and systems in place. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели какие-то правила и процедуры, которые они должны были соблюдать. Они имели вам нужно, когда вы анализируете клиента, нужно знать вот этот процент клиента, который вас покидает. На самом деле, это коэффициент удержания. In my book, first class service. В моей книге высококлассный сервис. You have a lot of this information. Есть очень много этой информации. Hang on a second, I'll find it for you. It's in Russian, so my Russian is pretty weak. No, you have the 12th edition. Let's just say. <coughs> you have the 10th edition. What version is this? <laughs> the 10th edition. They got the 12th edition out for a year. <laughs> when did you get your book? In Russia. I know, the 12th edition in Russia. It's Yes, and we haven't got your books. It has nothing to do with it. No, the 12th edition is in Russian. I have copies of it. John, we are talking about the 10th edition of the book, the 10th edition of the book, the 10th edition of the book, the 10th edition of the book. So if you know your defection rate, and everybody in the company knows the defection rate and the loss, you will take better care of a customer. Если бы все знали процент клиентов, которые регулярно покидают компанию, наверное, ситуация была бы лучше. So the plan for countering high defections, high improving your retention rate is what's the cost of acquiring a new customer? Тоже хороший вопрос, который следует задать, какова стоимость привлечения одного клиента? I'm sure that Rolf spends a lot of money on advertising. Уверен, что Rolf тратит большие деньги на рекламу. This dealership right here is gorgeous. It costs a lot of money for lights, building the building, paying everybody's payroll. Составляет большую часть расходов компании, свет, тепло. So what's your annual marketing and advertising budget? It's probably a lot. Наверное, у вас очень большой маркетинговый бюджет и фотосон. What's the average size purchase of a customer? Какова, каков средний чек покупки вашего клиента? Remember, they can just do an oil change. They have body repairs. They have service problems with their car. They can buy a used car, and they can buy a new car. Как вы понимаете, клиент как минимум может купить, продать автомобиль, поменять масло, обратиться в кузовной. And then, how many customer complaints do you get each year? И сколько клиентов действительно жалоба какого количества клиентов доходит до вас? Most people don't complain. Большинство людей никогда не говорят о том, что они делают. They just say, они просто делают вот так. And you need a system for measuring and tracking defections. Вам нужна система измерения процента людей, которые отказываются. So the formula we use for the defection rate is what's your total defections per year. No, it's the formula. You don't have that slide. I guess. I guess. It's just as it's be back. It will be over further. And then what's the total profit over the lifetime of a customer? If you knew the profit of a customer was eight hundred thousand dollars U.S., what would you do? No, there is no formula. But you don't know if it's two hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand. So when there's a two hundred dollar dispute, the employee says, "Screw you." And you just said goodbye. To several hundred thousand dollars, but the employee only thought he was talking two hundred dollars when he didn't know that he just lost three hundred thousand dollars or eight hundred thousand dollars. Nobody knows the value of a lifetime customer, so they don't give a damn. 
никто не измеряет э, цикл клиента, и, соответственно, никто тоже не может сказать, сколько клиент, сколько денег он потеряет, потому что человек покинул вас на третьем году жизненного цикла, а мог еще там 10 лет. Сумма, которую человек тратит за время, пока пользуется автомобилем, чудовищная. На базе там, каждый миллионы долларов каждый год. И then what do you have special? And by the way, uh, Fred Reichwald and Earl Sasser from Harvard said if you can reduce your defection rate by 5%, you can have profit swings of 25 to 100%. Да, знаете, And then if you can reduce your defection rate by 50%, you can double the growth of all. Вы можете два раза увеличить прибыльность компании, если снизить количество уходящих клиентов. The real reason people defect is because service sucks. И самая причина, почему люди отказываются от работы с вами, потому что вы не правы таких ожиданий. Ну, это если лежать. That's the reason I've defected from most of the dealerships. Это причина, по которой я отказался от многих дилерских центров в своей жизни. So if you want to reduce the defection rate, you've got to train the entire workforce at Rolf in every dealership. You should create a SWAT team. These are people that can do anything. You've got to list the actions necessary to reduce defections. But most people don't know the lifetime value of a customer and the profit and the annual revenue, so they don't care. Большинство людей не знают, большинство бизнесов не знают, какие деньги они теряют, поэтому, в принципе, не сильно переживают. Now, uh, I'm, I'm with, I fly a lot of Delta airlines, because they have 85% of all the gates out of Minneapolis. Я часто летаю компанией Delta Airlines. And uh, I'm Diamond, the highest level you can get. Я нахожусь там в статусе бриллиантового клиента. So I can call them toll free and they answer the call in 30 seconds with a live person. 24 hours, 7 days a week. The people can do anything. The people can do anything. That answer the phone. The answer. The people that answer the phone can do anything. Люди, которые отвечают на телефон в этой особой поддержке таких клиентов, они могут сделать все, что угодно. If I call Delta right now, I don't have to give them my flight. I can just say I want you to check my flight on Saturday. All of it's right in front of me. So I don't know what you're doing with your best customers. How easy is it for them to do business with Rome? See, if you've got poor customers, poor, poor people buying your cars, They have low expectations. This is a BMW dealership right here. Anybody that buys a BMW has money. And their expectations are higher. They're used to flying all over the world. Probably most of your customers have been to the U.S. And they know what great service is like. You might think you're a monopoly. But there are more than one BMW dealerships, I bet, in Moscow. Am I correct? And there's more than one Lexus dealership, more than one Hyundai, more than one uh, Toyota. <coughs> Once you piss off a customer, they'll never buy another car from Rolf. You just got to hope there's other stupid people that are going to buy it from Rolf that didn't know. So let's take a look at Amazon. How many here buy a product from Amazon? Nobody buys anything from Amazon. Amazon's goal is to be the most customer-centric company in the world, in the earth. And they're awesome. 
самый клиенториентированный компании в мире. I buy something from Amazon probably every week. Я покупаю что-то на Amazon в среднем каждый раз в каждую неделю. I think Amazon is the most customer-driven company in the world. Я считаю, что самая клиенториентированная компания в мире. If you were to read their annual report every single year, Jeff Bezos, the founder, puts this into the annual report. Customer obsession rather than competitor focus. Heartfelt passion for invention. A commitment to operational excellence. And a willingness to think long term. In his 1997 letter to shareholders, which he reprints every year, the company started in 1995. He said, focus relentlessly on our customers. There are very few CEOs in the world that focus relentlessly on their customers for years. I work with Tekadam in Kazakhstan. They had huge improvements in customer service. <coughs> Impacted sales, everything. And then two years ago, human resources stopped everything. Customer services deteriorated. It's gone, has gone downhill. They're no longer the service lead. Just two years. See, in most companies, you heard Svetlana saying in sales you got a 60% employee turnover. Svetlana сказала о том, что у вас порядка 60% персонала идет. So you need to keep developing people every year with something new and fresh. The HR person I don't want to work with anymore at Technica. The HR person, she's worthless. But it cost Technica a lot of money. They lost their focus. Sometimes there are certain departments in your company that don't give a damn about customer service. Есть департамент, целый департамент в бизнесе, который вообще не понимает, что идет речь, когда мы говорим о клиентском сервисе. He said we make bold long-term investment decisions. Принимает смелые решения по инвестициям в долгосрочной перспективе. We work hard to spend wisely and maintain our lean culture. И работать над тем, чтобы тратить с умом, поддерживать нашу lean культуру. One of the strengths of Amazon is price. They got the best prices. If you're fat, you no longer have the best prices. If you have too many employees, too much overhead, you no longer have the best prices. And he focuses on hiring. And he focuses on hiring and maintaining talented employees. So let's look at the sales numbers for Amazon. Last year their sales were 177 billion dollars. That's US, not rubles. Sales increased 41.9 billion dollars last year. <laughs> Did Rolf sales increase last year 41.9 billion? USD? Thirty-one percent increase in sales. They have five hundred and sixty-six thousand employees. Their stock is up ninety-eight thousand percent over the past twenty-one years. Stock. They're a publicly held company. Okay. Рост акций, стоимость акций составил за 21 год 98 тысяч процентов. The value of their stock has increased 270 percent over the last three years. Стоимость акций выросла за три года на 270 процентов, 93 процентов. 103 percent in the past 12 months. 
103% in the last 12 months. Yes, yeah, so the company got almost doubled. <laughs> okay, they have 480 million products. Uh, Jeff Bezos' uh, salary is $81,800 every year. Probably less than each of you are making. Jeff Bezos is 20% of company. The salary is a year. A year. He's the world's richest person. His net worth is $160 billion. He increased his net worth over $60 billion this year. See, there's two reasons you, that companies don't copy Amazon. Most CEOs don't want to increase sales $41.9 billion a year. And most CEOs don't want to increase their net worth $60 billion in one year. So the number one thing that has made us the number one thing that's made us successful by far is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer. They're consistently attentive. Jeff Bezos said there's two kinds of companies. The first is always trying to charge more. That would be Delta Airlines. And then the other kind that's always trying to charge less. That's Amazon. And he said efficiency, cheapness is part of the Amazon culture. <coughs> Bezos said we dramatically lowered prices, further increasing customer value. He said word of mouth has made us, remains the most powerful customer acquisition tool we have. That's all right. Just saying. Okay. He, they don't spend money on advertising. On Customers talk about Amazon every day. Because the experience is so awesome. Most companies have to spend a lot of money on advertising. Service leaders don't. He said we continue to focus relentlessly. You got to move the slide. We have to continuously focus relentlessly on our customers. He said we maintain the darkest focus on shop on the shopping experience. This is probably one of the most important slides coming up. Bezo said if you want to do more of something, make the friction less. If you want to do less of something, make the friction more. So when I walk into your dealership yesterday and there's no salespeople, that's a lot of friction. I don't know how you make sales without salespeople. Now maybe you have to get down on your hands and knees at Rolf and ask somebody to help you buy a car. I don't know what your front desk women do other than look beautiful. So and you could say, well, this is an exception. It was only three dealerships. <coughs> That's bad. So with Amazon, they operate 24-7. Live people answer the call in 30 seconds, 24 hours a day. They return calls in one second if you want them to call you. They never say no. I've never had anybody at Amazon tell me no. Never. And I have 12 addresses and 13 credit cards on file. I'll give you an example. Of, uh, I met a guy about a year ago who was the founder of Carmichael Lynch, a very successful, one of the largest advertising agencies in the United States. <coughs> he wrote a book called Amazing Minnesota. 
I wanted to buy the book. I wanted to buy the book. So he gave me his website. After 20 minutes, I gave up. Через 20 минут я не не почту, а веб-сайт. Он дал мне адрес. Last month he was speaking at an event I was at. Через 20 минут я остался. And he said Amazon is running out of his book. Amazon is running out of his book. They don't have enough books. Amazon carries his book. Okay, you could buy Amazon. He said the book is available on Amazon. Человек, который эту книгу хотел купить, была доступна на Амазоне. So as I'm sitting there listening to him, I went on my iPhone and I ordered the book from Amazon. It took 20 seconds, not 20 minutes. Заказать книгу на Амазоне за него 20 секунд. It was delivered two days later to my home. Через два дня ее доставили. It's called Speed. Называется. Operational excellence. Amazon understands make it easy for people to do business with you. Let me translate it a bit more, okay? Суть заключается в том, чтобы некий человек, который написал книгу и сказал, где эту книгу можно купить на каком-то сайте, соответственно, в течение 20 минут Джон получилось это сделать, он зашел с телефона на сайт Amazon, за 20 секунд заказал книгу, которая была ему интересна, он показывает пример того, как можно делать бизнес место. So for Ralph, you gotta really make it easy for people to do business with you. Вам нужно очень сильно постараться простить для клиентов. But I think that in Russia, most of your employees get down on their knees every morning and they ask God for more policies, rules, and procedures. The Soviet legacy is still very strong in Russia. Two weeks ago, I wanted to spend 72,000 US dollars a year on printing for a client here in Moscow. You got a trade check. Two weeks ago, I wanted to spend seventy-two thousand dollars a year per year for three years buying printing in Kazakhstan. Buying printing. Printing. Хотел потратить на две тысячи долларов на то, чтобы купить печатное оборудование. In order to do the printing, they had to provide the paperwork that the printing was printed in Kazakhstan so it could be picked up and shipped to Russia. In order to ship the product out of Kazakhstan, they had to provide the paperwork to say that it was printed in Kazakhstan in order to go to Russia. Nobody wanted the business. They're stupid, that's why. It's the former Soviet thinking that's strong in Russia and strong in Kazakhstan. It's rampant. That's over 210,000 US dollars a year. So Marina and my staff identified 20 printers in Moscow that were supposed to be good at customer service. Marina on my staff identified 20 printers in Moscow that were supposed to be customer driven. Printers. Printers. Printing. Printing books. Leader guides. Printing. Seven of those never responded. Because in Moscow, most companies have too much money. They don't need more business. She ended up working with one company who already received a wire transfer. So what I find is most companies in Russia are fat, happy, lazy, thinking like the former Soviet Union. And they all think they're good at customer service. This is only the last two weeks. Incredible. So at, at Amazon, they're focusing the next one. They're focusing on Sunday delivery now. 
They have one hour delivery and 5,000 saves. If you're willing to wait two hours on Sunday, it's free. Amazon is developing drones to deliver packages in 30 minutes or less. He didn't move the slide. Amazon работает на технологии, которая позволит осуществлять доставку заказа дронов в течение 30 минут. Watch this video. So somehow you see, I had my Russian files also on my computer, but you guys didn't want to use it, so we'll use it. Just just show me because we can. No, it's just too complicated. Just. They're exceptional at empowerment. And they, grow, and they grow with word of mouth advertising. You will rarely ever see a TV commercial for Amazon. Now, I invested a thousand dollars each in nine service leaders back in May of 2003. В мае 2003 года я инвестировал в 9 лидеров клиентского сервиса в Соединенных Штатах. То, что я понял, вследствие делать это во всех компаниях не следовало. That $9,000 is worth $80,000 as of October 31. И результаты на 31 октября 2018 года the stock at Amazon is worth $51,000. Costco $8,900. General Electric used to be a service leader. They focus now on greed, incompetence, and their stock is worth $597. Michael Dell built a business on speed, price, and customer service. When he retired the first time, he put in Kevin Rollins, a numbers guy, as CEO. Michael Dell, the основатель владелец бренда Dell, шел на пенсию в четвертом году и вот то, что тоже. The first thing he eliminated was customer service. Потому что первое, от чего они избавились, приходят новые владельцы. That stock today is worth four hundred seventy-five dollars. And then you got to use technology to drive business. Technology can increase speed, reduce costs if it's done right. Amazon uses technology to improve the customer experience. Компания Amazon использует технологии для того, чтобы улучшить качество клиентского обслуживания. Ninety-nine percent of companies use technology to piss off the customer. Ninety-nine percent of companies use technology to piss off the customer. You got to create customer-friendly systems and procedures. Вам нужно создавать правила и процедуры, удобные для клиента. You got to effectively build and develop every employee. Необходимо эффективно развивать и обучать сотрудников. You got to train all employees, no exception. Нужно тренировать всех без исключения. Customers value exceptional service. How do they value? They give you a lot more. A lot more. And then you got to demand excellence and then compensate those who deliver excellence. You got to value managers, employees, and then you got to educate it and invest it. Just a second. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like you know, sales. Right. We need to finance. Medically impacts sales and revenue. Ah, because the cost of the service is dramatically affected by the number of sales. But if you're going to be a service leader, then you got to be relentless. If you're going to be a client's customer, year after year after year. You can't say in 2019 we're going to focus on customer service. What would happen if Amazon said in 2019 we'll have customer service once? Nobody would care about customer service. 
different customers don't focus on retail. In January, when they give us their sales report, they'll probably increase sales in this calendar year, sixty billion dollars. Amazon. Focus on clients, that is, the company Amazon, for the digitalization of the company, is about sixty billion dollars. So going through the motions of providing service is one thing. The only thing that counts is exceptional, noticeable service. На самом деле, единственное, на что обращают клиенты внимание, это качество и сервис. So, let's go through why I switch car dealerships. Давайте поговорим о том, что это смысл. Next one. Okay. Okay. So at Toyota, uh, when we had the car in for repair, somebody stole an iPod. Расскажу несколько историй, почему я отказался от работы с тем или иным дилерским центром. They were not willing to take responsibility. Бренд Toyota, у меня украли iPod. I bought a Toyota Highlander. Это был Toyota Highlander. When I bought the car, I had tan seats, and they put the covers on them. Когда я купил автомобиль, у него было 10 сидений. The cover in the back constantly was coming off. И один из чехлов на одном сидении постоянно they would not fix it. There was a large chain called Luther. Yeah, dealership chain. Many brands. It's the last car I ever bought from that dealership and the last car I bought from Luther. My wife had a Mercedes Benz. Both of us hated the car. They had really poor customer service at the dealership. Corporate headquarters was just as bad. So, and then in the last year or two, there's this book written on Mercedes-Benz and how great they are at customer service. <coughs> Somebody is using cocaine. I mean, I would never buy another car from Mercedes, ever. <laughs> then I told you the story about the battery where they wanted $25 to check it. <laughs> and then Audi, we bought four cars from Audi. Incredible customer service, incredible care. I just, we wanted a different brand. We were tired of Audi's. So we went to Lexus. Now, the advantage you got is you got every brand. So, all of the previous dealerships, we left because of lousy service. So, this is the Lexus dealership. This is Pat Bernanke, who I bought three cars from in the last four years. And this is their Lexus dealership on the left. I bought an RX from him. And unfortunately, my wife likes the car. So she's drawn driving my car a lot when I'm not around. So, uh, around September 1, I was going on a fishing trip to uh, Canada with my son. And I had to put all the seats level in the back. This is a 4 by 4 I couldn't figure out how to lower the back seats. I read the manual, couldn't figure it out in the manual. So Sunday morning about 10 o'clock, I called Pat. He said, I can't remember exactly how to do it. He said, why don't I come over to your house? I'm only 10 minutes away, and I'll figure it out. Would your salespeople do that? On a Sunday? 
I bought three cars from already. This guy's really good. So if you look at critical positions at Ralph, you've got the body shop. You could do a lot of business with the body shop. You can do a lot of business in the body shop. You got the sales assistant, the auto mechanic, specialist in evaluation and exchange of used cars, a used car evaluator, sales manager, prolongation assistant, whatever that is. Accountant. Electrician, diagnostic, this is off your website. Uh, support sales manager, warehouse technician, filter, marketing shop assistant, sales manager, internet marketer, <coughs> car sales, seller of new cars. All of these people are important. Any one of them can lose your customer. Any of them. Okay. Because they don't care. They don't know that a customer at Rolf might be worth $400,000, nor do you know. Because you probably have never done the numbers to find out what is the value of a lifetime customer. So if you knew the value of a lifetime customer at Rolf was $500,000, would you treat them differently? See, it's not a thousand dollars. It's a lot of money, but nobody knows. So nobody cares. None of these people care because they don't. They think it's just a small amount of money. So let's talk about another role model. How many here have an Apple product? Apple. Raise your hand. Okay, about 30, 40 percent. Um, Apple is an incredible service leader, founded by Steve Jobs, Tim Cook is now running the company, Angela Arnhart, the senior vice president of retail, said, if you're going to employ people anyway, why not make them the differentiator? They are not a commodity. So, I think most people in most companies are not valued. Angela and Apple understand the value of their employees. She's ranked the 25th most powerful woman in the world. She grows the value in Burberry from 2.6 billion to 9 billion. We're not talking rubles, we're talking dollars. In 2012, she was the highest paid CEO in the UK with $26 million. And she earned over $70 million in 2014 at Apple. That's how much they paid her to go work at Apple. Because she's good. Angelus believes the key to Apple's future is not just marvelous products, but also engaging and energizing its nearly 66,000 employees in 36 countries. Alexei, how many employees are there at Rome? About 8,000. 8,000. Okay. So you could change this. You could put Svetlana's picture up here. And then you could say, believes the key to Ralph's future is not just marvelous cars, but also engaging and energizing its nearly 8,000 employees in St. Petersburg and Moscow. So I like to show numbers because I can talk about the need to improve customer service, but most people say, show me the money. 
Ну, большинство людей всегда, если говорить о сотрудниках, будут говорить, не, не, не заливайте на эту ложь, покажите деньги. So if you look at the numbers on the fourth quarter, they had sales over the last three months of 62.9 billion dollars. Выручка за третий квартал почти 63 миллиарда долларов. Net profit of 14 billion in three months. Чистая прибыль 14 миллиардов долларов просто в третьем квартале. No firm in the world can do that. Ни одна компания в мире не показывает такой результат. But they have incredible service. Дело в том, что у них великолепные выдающиеся сервисы. International sales are 65 percent of sales. И продажи вне США 65% составляют. Годовая выручка составила 265 миллиардов долларов, чисто прибыль 50. Это то, чем могла бы быть компания. Могла бы быть на месте в автомобильном сегменте Бетельян. So the goal, Tim Cook said, the goal was to get people who are creative, wickedly smart, and slightly rebellious. Under Steve Jobs, there was zero tolerance for non-performance. I find in most companies in the world, there is huge tolerance for non-performing. В большинстве компаний мира очень высок, высокая терпимость к персоналу, который не показывает результат. In most companies in the world, you got to work night and day to get fired. Get to work. You have to work night and day in order to get fired. А в большинстве компаний мира тебе нужно просто прикладывать чудовищные усилия, работать просто над тем, чтобы тебя уволили. Out of your 8,000 employees, I'll bet there's 800 that if they were fired tomorrow, nobody would miss them. На самом деле, из ваших 8 тысяч человек, которые работают в компании Rolf, если уволить 10%, 800 человек, я вас уверяю, сильно никто и не заметит. See, when you pay dead people, you waste money. Если вы платите таким людям, вы просто теряете деньги. It pisses off all the other employees. И это очень сильно бесит клиентов. And then they become contagious, like cancer in your body. И в какой-то момент это начинает распространяться по вашей компании, и подобно рак. But we keep thinking we're going to save these individuals. Но мы предпочитаем... They got a spouse. They have children, <coughs> and we know that Svetlana makes a lot of money at Rolf. So it's better to take care of these dead people and keep them on the payroll. Svetlana, would you agree that there's probably 10% of your 8,000 employees that are dead? Too many? How many? 50% of that? 50 or 15? 50. Only 50 employees out of 8,000? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 50 out of 8,000. Yeah. So that's a very tiny percentage. <coughs> that's only like one, not even one person per dealership. 50 percent. 50 percent. Oh! Okay. So when you keep dead people on your payroll, если продолжать платить людям, которые по сути не работают, вы теряете клиентов. Люди, которые показывают результат действительно вашей компании, сами не хотят с этими людьми работать рядом. When uh, Steve Jobs was bought out by Disney with his two companies, when Steve Jobs was his companies were purchased by Disney. He had to run Disney. <coughs> he had to fire 50% of the people. When he went back to Apple, he had to fire 50% of the people. See, your success here is having high-performing employees. So if you want to protect dead people, there's a good chance you could lose your job. 
there's a good chance you would lose your job. Есть высокая вероятность, что если вы это не будете делать, вы потеряете свою работу. Let's just skip this video. It's too much work. At Tim Cook, if you believe the most important data points are people, you want to push the people who are doing great. Anyway, you either want to develop the people who are not, or in the worst case, you need to be somewhere else. Yes, we believe that if you want to push the people who are not, or in the worst case, you need to be somewhere else. Yes, we believe that if you want to push the people who are not, or in the worst case, See, when you go into an Apple store in the United States, somebody's always there to greet you. Always. Когда вы заходите в магазин Apple в Соединенных Штатах, всегда есть человек, который вас поприветствует всегда. Roman sent me a WhatsApp message on Tuesday night when I was in New Jersey last week. Roman переслал мне сообщение пару минут. He wanted me to buy three Apple products. Он попросил меня, чтобы именно bring from the US. Bring from the U.S. but buy at an Apple store. Попросил меня привезти три продукта Apple из Соединенных Штатов. I asked the client I was with if they would take me to an Apple store. Я на тот момент находился с клиентом и спросил, могли бы они меня подбросить до магазина. They said yes. Они сказали конечно. How long do you think it took from the moment I entered the Apple store till the moment I left to buy thirteen hundred dollars worth of product? Как вы думаете, сколько времени меня заняло с момента, как я зашел в магазин и вышел из магазина, потратить 1300 долларов на то, что я приобрел? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. I just handed the person my phone. You know, the first person that greeted me said, "Why are you here?" I said, "I want to buy some Apple products right now, and I only have a few minutes." Первый человек, который меня поприветствовал, спросил, чем я могу. So he had a salesperson come over. Я сказал, что мне нужно срочно купить три продукта. I handed him my iPhone. Я передал телефон. He said, "Here's the products he wants." Это вот то, что хочет мой товарищ. He took his iPhone. Он взял свой iPhone. And he's got a swiper on the bottom. У него была такая специальная штучка. And he ordered the three products from the back. И он просто на обратной стороне набрал товары, которые нужны. So they brought up the products. He scans them with his phone. Принесли со склада, я тоже сосканировал своим телефоном. He says, "Do you want a sales receipt by email or printed?" Он спросил, вы хотите получить чек по почте или в печатном виде? I said both. So he goes over here. There's another table. Underneath the table, there's a little bitty printer that you can't see. Print out the sales receipt. Ten minutes I was out of there. That's called speed. Using technology to improve the shopping experience. But there aren't any dead people at Apple. Very difficult to get a job at Apple. Хотя при этом очень тяжело. And they don't pay the people a lot of money. Хотя при этом они в самой компании денег много не платят. But they all love working at F. Но очень многие люди хотят там работать. So when you go to a party Friday night, where do you work? And you say I work at F. Если вы хотите пойти на вечеринку в пятницу и. If you're a young man. И вы говорите вы работаете в F. You can pick up a lot of girls. Если вы говорите что вы работаете в F, или молодой молодой. Can you help me out with my phone? People are proud to work for Apple. And there's, if you were in an Apple store, there's tons of people coming in every second. But see, most companies don't want to do that because they don't need that much revenue. They have 503 stores in 36 countries. They have more employees per square foot than any other company in the world. They call you by your name. You're always going to get approached. Always. That was the problem when I went into Ralph. Nobody ever approached me in the three dealerships. I mean, can you imagine if I went into an Apple store and I look at all their products, I touch it, I hold it, I do stuff with it, and nobody approaches me? Well, that happened at three of your dealerships. That's bad. But maybe on Tuesday mornings you don't have salespeople. Возможно, просто по вторникам продавцы работают. Слышь, а в этом магазине, где был Джон, там были еще клиенты, там, там был один? Никого не было вообще. Никого не было? And you never talk down to. See, I'm not real smart when it comes to computers and electronics. Я не очень сильно разбираюсь, когда делаю. They always treat me with respect. На телефоне и о компьютере, но всегда все с уважением относятся к моему магазину. Many women in the United States sometimes feel they're not treated well because they don't know a lot about cars. Многие женщины в Соединенных Штатах не очень комфортно себя чувствуют, когда общаются с продавцами, потому что к ним относятся как к людям, которые в автомобилях не разбираются.
which is you got to use the customer's name. <coughs> Вы одна из вещей, которым я учу в самом начале, всегда должны использовать имя человека, с которым. I'm staying at the hotel Ukraine. Я стою. Checked in yesterday, nobody used my name. Гостиница Украина, и когда я прохожу. When I went to the eleventh floor with the executive lounge, nobody used my name. И когда я прохожу в этом отеле, никто никогда не звал меня по имени. Yesterday, about two o'clock, Roman and I are having lunch there, and the general manager comes to my table. He said, I wanted to meet you. And so I chatted with him and I said, let me give you a couple of suggestions. I said, nobody uses your name at the Radisson. He said, they're all taught how to do that. They want what? Trained how to do that. I said, well, they don't do it. And then I said, your security guards don't know they're in customer service. Then he told me they have 300 security guards. I mean, in the United States, you wouldn't have one. You got 300. So today, I wanted to test it because previously, when I went to a security guard with my phone, and I said, I'd like you to take a picture of us. The security guard always says no. Always. So I wanted to test it today because he told me that's not true. Security guard told me that he can't take pictures. That's not his job. Today. Three hundred of them. They're everywhere. So, in your business, every employee is really important. Most of them probably don't know they're in customer service. So, I think the most valuable thing in life to an individual is their name. Whether it's Igor or Alexei, your name is very important. And then if you got rich people, their name is even more important. By the way, the Radisson today constantly used my name. So the general manager had an influence on him yesterday. So you could say Mr. Shaw, Mr. Smith, whatever the person's name is. But there's three reasons we don't use a customer's name. Indifference, I don't give a damn. Number two, I don't know how to say Scholl, so I'm not going to use a name. I've got the fear. I don't know how to say Svetlana or Olga, so I'm not going to use a name. And the principal reason is lack of training. If I was going to call Amazon right now, they'd use my name. If I went into the Apple store, they'd use my name. But most companies don't want to copy them because they make too much money. So I don't care what door a person comes in at Roth, whether it be an oil change, whether it be car repairs, whether it be body shop, whether it be buying a used car, a new car, the person's name is very important. If I was you and I saw a customer in your dealership, I'd introduce myself. I'd ask their name. And then I'd use their name. See, your customers are basically wealthy people. They have money. Now you're saying you don't understand, Shul, in the Russian culture, we don't use people's names. Let me tell you what, if you want to be a service leader, you want to be the most powerful company in all of Russia, I would encourage you to start using the customer's name. Remembering the customer, recognizing the customer. When a person has an 8 o'clock appointment to have their car come, come in, Everybody that touches that customer knows who that is. They should be using their name. You got, you know, anywhere between one to three girls at that front desk 
Instead of having Christmas ornaments there, you should have people that can smile, introduce themselves to the customer, use their name, ask the customer their name. Mr. Scholl, it's good to have meet you. Or is there anything in particular you're looking for today, Mr. Scholl? If I was a salesperson and I see somebody opening up every car, sitting in the car, I would get off my ass and I'd go talk to the customer. To me, that would be common sense. But see, I've always wanted to make money. And I think a lot of people don't need money. I think most people are really happy and content with low performance and no money. And it's again, you know, Svetlana, I said, if, if I went into any car dealership in the U.S. and I looked at all the cars, sat in the cars, and nobody ever came up to me, I'd walk out. There's no way I would buy a car. So the first person, the good news, by the way, I didn't see any inside your dealerships, I didn't see any security guards. That's good. You got a lot of them outside. But those three girls, or two girls, wherever many you got, you know, should be, have a smile. I gotta turn off this phone. It's calling and I didn't do nothing. Can you turn off my phone? Just totally turn off the stupid thing. Um, so, remembering the customer and using their name is very important. I don't care what they're coming in for, everybody should know the customer and use their name. And, uh, Remembering your customers is one of the most important skills critical. It's the highest level of customer service. Everybody wants to feel special. People coming into your dealerships are not poor people. They need to be treated special. You have to have enough interest to introduce yourself, give them your name, and ask their name. We teach the protocol of how to do that. If the person says, my name is John, then you could use John. If they say, my name is John Scholl, then you would use Mr. Scholl. If a person's older, they like their last name used. Make people feel special. They give you a lot of money. And you're selling really expensive stuff. And by the way, it doesn't matter what they're buying. They could be buying a park. They could be going into the body shop. They could be having oil changes. They could do tune-ups. There could be a lot of things they could do at your dealership. You want to be the location of choice for anything somebody wants to do with a car. You know, the vast majority of profit comes from the back end. In the United States, most car dealerships lose their customer on the back end. They focus on a one-time sale and then they you know, give the customer the shaft and all the different stuff in the back. So self-imposed limitations are the biggest barriers to your success. Each of you could dramatically improve your own income if you focus on a better customer experience. If you're a manager of a department, it's your responsibility to make sure everybody in your department or your dealership knows that they're in customer service. And speed is really important in your business. Because people don't want to be without their car for a day or two. Let me give you another role model, which is Metro Bank in London. Uh, in 1973, Vernon Hill started a bank called Commerce Bank with seven employees. 
When he sold the bank in 2007, they had 10,000 employees. He started a new bank on July 29, 2010, with 40 employees. And today they got 3,000 employees. By the way, uh, this is his house in New Jersey, is the largest house in New Jersey. And this is Vernon Hill. <coughs> the average new bank in America, these are the numbers that I like to use, gross deposits one to two million dollars a year per location. So you can relate this to your car dealerships. At Commerce Bank, they were growing deposits $18 million a year. That's 18 times better than any other American bank. At Metro Bank, they're growing deposits $98.3 million per location per year. And they don't spend money on advertising. It's all word of mouth. But everything's built on the customer experience. Here in Moscow, do you have seven day branch banking and go in at any hour of the day? Is this on the This is correct. The goal is to have 100 locations. They opened with four locations, 75 million euros. First new bank in London in over 163 years. I happen to be a major investor in the bank. You have to. I am a major investor in the bank. I know the numbers. I know the return. I need to be rich. I'm a major investor in the bank. I own a lot of stock. You? Me, personally. Me, how I met. Their hours are Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Saturdays, 8 to 6. Sundays from 11 to 5. Are your banks open those kind of hours? Uh, not all of them. How about your dealerships? How about your dealerships? <coughs> they open uh, every every day, but from 8 to 10 p.m. That's and pretty good hours. Except one hour, or except one day in a year. Okay, that's really good. You know, a funny thing in Minnesota, where I live, <coughs> the car dealerships all lobbied to have a law passed so that no car dealership could be open on a Sunday. In last year, the legislature finally allowed liquor to be sold on Sundays. Crazy. <coughs> Is this what your banks look like? <coughs> so Metro Bank closes three days a year. They're open 78 hours a week. And that's because of the, uh, the account opening business, which means taking business away from the competition. This is his wife Shirley and their dog Duffy. Can you bring your, your dog to your bank? Can you bring your dog to your bank here in Moscow? Yes, we can. You can. Because okay. at Metro Bank, they, you know, they have treats for the dogs, they have water bowls for the dogs, they value dogs. Metro Bank, there is a special place where the dog can sit. There is water for the dog. They have free penny arcade. Free, free penny. You got to move the slide. Free penny arcade. 
I mean, like <laughs> free coin counting. Children every day go to Metro Bank. They win prizes. Every day. Do any of your children pull at your sleeve and say, Mom or Dad, can you take me to the bank? I mean, there's a different environment here. And then when you go into your bank here in Moscow, you have a terminal, correct? You have a terminal. You push a button on a terminal. Because all the banks are the same in Russia. Let me tell you what, if Apple wanted to do that, they would probably reduce sales 50%. So if I had a bank in this country, I would have a young, attractive female or male with an iPad. I would eliminate the security guard and have him or her greet the customer. Доброе утро, сэр. My name is Ольга. Обязательно приветствую клиента. What is your name? Меня зовут так, а как зовут вас? Mr. Shaw. Thank you for coming. Mr. Shaw, спасибо, что зашли на сбор. Anything in particular that you want to do here today at our bank? У вас какой-то конкретный вопрос? Oh, you're interested in a car loan? Я просто подумал о том, чтобы взять кредит на машину. Great. Let me take you to Vladimir. Vladimir is in charge of car loans. Отлично. Давайте я познакомлю с Владимиром. Владимир отвечает у нас как раз. Vladimir, this here. Is Mr. Shaw, and he's interested in the car loan. Can you please take care? That's what an Apple does. But see, Apple, nobody wants to make fifty billion dollars a year in profit. It's too much money. Nobody wants to make fifty billion dollars a year in profit. Robin, can you? Естественно, ну, просто Джон говорит, а, как, как это влияет на показатели, это Apple зарабатывает космические деньги, порядка 50 миллиардов прибыли в год. Джон, uh, let's uh, say how, how many time you spend for buy from me. Apple. I already told that you were outside yeah, the room, 10 minutes. Already, yeah, we're too late. No. So all calls in the Carl Center are answered in one or two rings with live <laughs> They have customer toilets in each bank. And they open 10 minutes early and they close 10 minutes late. Because of traffic in Moscow, have you ever been to the bank five minutes late? Yes. And the bank says, please come in, correct? Or the security guard says, no, 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 come back tomorrow. <coughs> you know, in most businesses, if they know they're going to close at 10 o'clock, everybody gets ready at 9.30 to close. <laughs> and in the States, you know, if a, if a business is going to open at 9 o'clock, the employees are sitting there with their watch waiting until it's exactly 9 o'clock. And they will never, ever, ever open the door one second early. Is it in the U.S.? That's in the U.S. Stupid! So, so, so Vernon Hill at Metro Bank and Commerce Bank opened each bank 10 minutes early and closed 10 minutes early. At Commerce Bank, he grew. Uh, if you had bought the stock, it grew 470 times. So there's four ways to communicate with Metro Bank. Four ways to communicate. You can go into the store. Great out. Easy to do business with. You can call their call center 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Humans, live people. You can go onto their their mobile app. You can do anything. 
If I have my iPhone in my hand, I can go onto the mobile app and in about 15 seconds I know what I got in my account. I can do all sorts of things. And you can use the internet. Four doors. You need a variety of doors because you don't know which one a person likes to go through. So let's just look at some final numbers here. What happens when you become a service leader? The average U.S. bank does well to open 25 new accounts a month. Commerce Bank opened 300 new accounts a month. Metro Bank is opening 570 new accounts per month per location. It would be like if you took all of your dealerships in St. Petersburg and Moscow and if you could add 570 well, you probably do that already, 570 new accounts per month, per location. Do you have 570 new customers per location, per month? У вас есть статистика, например, что привлекает 500, там, 700 новых клиентов каждый месяц? Well, we were talking about the cars, I would say yes. Okay, they have over 1.5 million retail and business accounts. У них порядка 1 миллиона детей. They gained 300,000 new customers from January to September. They spend no money in advertising. So now let's look at some more numbers. On their 10th anniversary, they're going to grow to $39 billion. I think I skipped one. So 69 to 76 billion in 140 to 160 stores. Very low. So if you had a thousand dollars, Metro Bank is going to pay less than the other banks. And they call their, their deposits sticky deposits. Because they have proven that customers value the customer experience. So most banks believe the only reason you bank there is because of the interest rate. Большинство банков считают, что клиентов удерживают в банке высокие процентные ставки. The people at Metro Bank bank there because they like a great customer experience. Люди хранят деньги в Metro Bank, поскольку они удовлетворены качеством клиентского обслуживания. So in this country, your interest rates are very high. So if I had a thousand dollars, I went to one of your banks, I'd probably get what five percent, six percent interest. Metro Bank, it might be half of a percent of one. You know, it's very small. The first time. Uh, here it was rate is about 2%. Yeah. So you get 2% on your money. Yeah. 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 And if I took a thousand dollars in rubles, <laughs> and rubles at the end of one year, what's that going to be worth? Plus in percent. So if I took that thousand dollars in rubles, I could convert it into dollars, and it's going to increase in value eight percent. But it's going to go down in value because the rubles go down, right? Dollar will be dollar. So my goal is to work with Ralph and other companies here in Russia to create indispensable and extraordinary employment. If you have eight thousand. Indispensable and extraordinary employees, you could triple sales. So, how do we motivate employees to care? First, you got to create an emotional impact. Secondly, you got to teach the skills, the art of customer service. And we got to build people from within. We got to work on their self-esteem and self-worth. We got to teach them how to handle irate customers, difficult customers. What I find is that sometimes really wealthy people are very demanding. Is that true? 
to tak? And so to a lot of people they get defensive. И большинство людей на самом деле. And they don't know how to handle it. Their personal ego gets confronted. Они что-то требуют. Просто не знают, как с этим справляться. And then you got to have teamwork. Дальше вам нужна работа в команде и внутренняя коммуникация. In the back of the room over there, you can take a look at some of our Russian products. All of our products have five design characteristics. If you want something to work, these five are critical. So number one, you got to have stuff that's fun, exciting, and entertaining. Когда вы учите людей, важно, чтобы это было весело и увлекательно. Executives like things that are dry, dry, dull, and boring. Больше скучно рассказывать, чем надо видеть. The more dry, the more boring, the better. Получается, многие делают так, чтобы было хуже, чем скучнее, тем хуже. Employees, employees get turned off with that. Second thing is you got to focus on fundamentals. Необходимо делать упор на основу бизнеса, на основе принципа. You got two to three seconds. You have two to three seconds to impact a customer. У вас есть одну до трех секунд для того, чтобы произвести впечатление на клиента. So you got to impact them with skills that they can instantly use. Есть просто навыки, которые необходимо развивать, чтобы их постоянно использовать. The packaging and material you give employees has to be awesome. Your cars are awesome. У вас здесь полот packaging здесь имеется в виду, что то, чем вы занимаетесь, должно быть качественно приготовлено. If your cars in the showroom look like the cars out on the street, you wouldn't sell it. Качество подачи очень важно. Обратите внимание, что ваши автомобили в шоуруме не чистые, красивые, не хочется посидеть, если бы они выглядели как машина на улице, и вы им никто не попал. Fourth thing you gotta have is experiential learning. Eighty percent of the time has to be group discussion, group interaction. То есть речь идет о том, что люди должны учиться на опыте. Then the fifth is you got to build people from within. Людям нужно давать возможность пробовать и учиться. Most of your employees have personal problems. У многих ваших людей есть. They have problems with their wife. Their husbands. Their girlfriends. Their boyfriends. Their parents. Their parents. Their boss. People get rattled easily. So you got to build them up. Люди очень много имеют причин, по которым они сфокусируются, а нужно держать их в тонусе. Ну и личностное развитие тоже. So if you want to create a service culture, you get something fresh and new virtually every four months. Создание сервисной культуры это очень последовательная вещь. So we use a disruptive model, and we focus on four things. Мы фокусируемся обычно на четырех вещах. Number one is we change attitudes and behavior. Необходимо начать с того, чтобы поменять отношения и поведение. There's not one person at Ralph that doesn't know customer service is important. Не может быть ни одного человека, который не понимает, чем занимается. They just don't do it. Если они не понимают, они просто не делают. The second thing is you got to teach the fundamentals, the skills. Второе, необходимо учить навыкам работы с клиентами, так называемые фундаментальные знания. Number three, you got to build employee morale and teamwork. Необходимо улучшать моральное состояние сотрудников и работу в команде. On Monday morning, do people love going to work? On Monday morning, do people love going to work at Rome? Было бы здорово, чтобы люди хотели в понедельник идти на работу. And then the last thing is we drive sales and revenue dramatically through our customer experience. Обучение должно стимулировать существенный рост прибыли. So the SQI process that we use is I think you need something new and fresh every four months. Процесс обучения I don't care where you get it, who you buy it from, but if you stop, it dies. The same thing as maintenance of your cars. If you say every five or ten years we'll do maintenance on our car. It's not going to last very long. If you say every five or ten years we'll do maintenance on our car. But we spend more money on maintenance of our cars than we do our people. Мы больше времени тратим на то, чтобы поддерживать автомобиль в нормальном состоянии, чем сколько раз. Whatever you use got to be fresh, it's got to be new and different. Материал должен быть свежим, интересным. Short interventions. С новым взглядом. 
We use on-site facilitation. <coughs> In Moscow or St. Petersburg, to get from one dealership to another dealership could easily take an hour. If you want to reduce costs, training time, it has to be done at every dealership. And the facilitators need three skills. Many of you in this room could be facilitators. First, you need enthusiasm. If you're boring and dry, you're not going to be a good facilitator. Number two, you got to have peer respect. So if you're an ass, nobody's going to listen to you. A lot of managers don't have peer respect. Some managers, Igor, have never practiced any of this stuff, and everybody knows it. And then the third is you got to have be a customer service role model. Должна быть некая ролевая модель для подражания в обслуживании клиентов. So you got to measure behavior. Измеряйте поведение ваших сотрудников. We focus on changing soft skills. Мы должны быть сфокусированы на изменениях. I don't care analytically what you know. It's do you do it. So when the general manager of the RAS tells me that every employee security guard understands they're in customer service, we've been working on it, we've dramatically changed it, he's full of bullshit. Security guards in your country are... You have to terminate non-performing employees. You know, if you keep dead people on your payroll, it hurts your performance. It hurts your sales. When we implement our training programs, sometimes the fertilizer doesn't work. Sometimes there's employees that don't give a damn about you or your company. When the fertilizer doesn't work, you have to help the employee find a job at your most favorite competitor. You're never going to change attitudes and behavior with one magic program. It's a process. Um, so one of the core we have we have one hour left, correct? I did. Okay, so one of the core ingredients of incredible service of speed. Speed me means dramatically reducing the time. Скорость означает, что вы значительно снижаете объем затраченного времени. So if it normally takes you three hours doing oil change, speed is how do I do it in 20 minutes? Если вы три часа меняете масло, то скорость придумать как делать за 20 минут. If it's putting the financing together and it normally takes 60 minutes at Ralph, how do I do it? Excuse me, how do I do it in 10 minutes? That's speed. Если вы делаете что-то полчаса, придумайте как это делать за 10 минут. So you got to dramatically reduce the time. If you're selling to little old ladies that are 75 years old, speed is not important. But I'm not sure how many 75-year-old ladies are coming in to Ralph. <coughs> so when you're dealing with high-value customers, they like speed. Если вы работаете с действительно значимыми клиентами, они хотят, чтобы все было так быстро. The problem with speed is the mindset of employees is slow. Slow is slow. The mindset of all employees is slow. Большинство сотрудников медленно думают, поэтому медленно действуют. And then the second thing is we love policies and procedures that are designed to increase slow. 
И последняя вещь – это то, что мы очень сильно увлечены политиками и процедурами, которые созданы для того, чтобы замедлять происходящее. So culturally and socially speaking, it's not in our nature from young people to where we are today to think with speak. So when you were in college, and it was Monday morning, and the professor said we have a test on Friday at nine o'clock, when did you start studying for the test? В понедельник в университете услышали от профессора, что в пятницу будет контрольно, когда вы начинаете готовиться. Когда вам привозят автомобиль после серьезного ДТП. Как долго занимает это ремонтирование? Важно сделать это. Мышление сотрудников. И процессы таким образом тоже не будут. So speed does not forego quality for the sake of finishing faster. Скорость не означает, что должно пострадать качество в результате того, что вы начали делать что-то быстрее. So let's talk a little bit about one of the other core ingredients, which is empowerment. Давайте поговорим еще несколько слов о том, что может дать делегирование полномочий или расширение полномочий сотрудника. My definition is that the employee has to make fast decisions on the spot in favor of the customer. Я убежден, что сотрудники могут решать очень многие вопросы на месте, если у них есть полномочия. Every dealership I left is because the employees could not make empowered decisions in favor of the customer. Те дилерские центры, с которыми я распрощался в своей жизни, были плохи тем, что люди не могли принимать эти решения. They were protecting the revenue of the dealership and they lost me for life. Они пытались защитить прибыль компании, потеряли меня за свою жизнь. So in the world, it takes two miracles to get an employee to make an empowered decision. It takes two miracles to get an employee to spend an empowered decision. So there's three reasons we don't make empowered decisions. Anybody guess what the most important reason is? What's the number one reason we don't make empowered decisions? No. Fear. Well, that is fear, but what is the fear? It's a question. Боимся пострадать от этого решения. Мы боимся потерять работу. Объяснение себя как руководителя, да. Если сотрудник будет делать другую работу. Нет. Шел третий час. Нет. 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 Second reason, you gave the guy a free oil change. It's coming right out of your salary. Если ты вторая причина считаешь, что если ты примешь решение в пользу клиента, выйдут у тебя зарплаты. Third reason is we don't want to be screamed at. Third reason is what? We don't want to be screamed at. Мы третья причина, мы не хотим, чтобы на нас кричали. But the number one reason worldwide why employees will not, under any condition, make an empowered decision is they know they will lose their job. Основная причина, основной страх сотрудников, то, которые не отказываются играть на себя полномочия, то, что начинается. If you're going to drive empowerment, you got to do it through creating a customer experience and supporting them. То есть единственный способ это объяснять сотрудникам, что с ними ничего не произойдет, и поддерживать их в том, чтобы они с клиентами. Let's take a ten minute break for coffee. Десять минут перерыва. Сейчас секунду. Тогда давайте десять минут, а десять минут не там по Владивостоку, не по всему. Так, двенадцать шестнадцать, двенадцать тридцать. Хорошо. So it's maybe one percent of companies understand empowerment. 
на самом деле менее одного процента компаний правильно The service что, leaders are pretty good at empowerment. Истинные лидеры отрасли клиентского обслуживания понимают, что такое увеличение и расширение полномочий. Your single goal at Ralph should be with every customer to make them over happy. Задача каждого сотрудника компании должна быть при общении с клиентом для вас то, что человек удовлетворен и счастлив. Когда клиенты счастливы, они дают и не, не покидают вас и ваш бизнес. Если вы не будете uh, делегировать полномочия, вы никогда не станете на кровать. Empowerment means you can take care of a customer to the customer's satisfaction. Empowerment means you grow at Ralph because you took care of customers. If you are lining your pocket with money, that's corruption. If you are lining your pocket with money, that's corruption. If people are giving you money to take care of them, it goes in your wallet, you should be fired. So, do you understand? Can you translate? Stand up. Roman, stand up. Клиенты предпочитают платить за то, чтобы... Они готовы платить за то, что о них заботятся, но они ненавидят, если их обкрадывают прямо из-за кошелька. If you do something free for your girlfriend, that's corruption. If you do something free for a customer to improve the customer experience, that's empowerment. We have to learn to trust our customers and trust our employees. If the, if the employee abuses that, you fire them. I'm skipping the videos because you don't have them set up. Я не хотел, чтобы тебе пришлось выстаивать эту длину. Я Спасибо. Очень не устоя страны. Без проблем. Чем я могу тебе помочь? Мне нужно разрешение на утилизацию мусора. Конечно. Да, я взгляну. У тебя есть необходимый документ? Лора. Отлично. Это займет около двух-трех недель. Так долго у меня есть. Всего два-три дня. Да, это обычное время ожидания. Ну, ты уверен, что нет никакого способа сделать это быстрее? Может, ты мог бы мне помочь? Слушай, приходи завтра. Обещаю, все будет готово. Нам только нужно будет обойти и стандартный процесс рассмотрения. Ты сделаешь это для меня? Конечно. Спасибо, Фрэнк, это так мило, я очень это ценю. Справлю. Пожалуйста. Я в эту субботу у меня будет ученика. Приходи, если хочешь. Хорошо, я подумаю. До встречи, Фрэнки. Пока, Ева. Ну, привет, Фрэнки. That would never happen in Russia, would it? Shame. So, in our training programs, we use humor. Because you can learn more from humor. In our training programs, we use humor. You can learn more from humor. So we use this vignette to talk about corruption. That many men would do. Correct? Такое могут сделать многие люди на работе, воспользуются служебным положением. Yes. Men will be men. Boys will be boys. Люди всегда остаются людьми. Naughty. Uh, but you gotta laugh at some of this stuff. 
Ну, над некоторыми вещами полезно посмеяться. If you had a workforce, 8,000 people that were empowered. Обратите внимание, сколько всего можно добиться. Представьте себе, если у каждого сотрудника будет реальный полномочий для того, чтобы... Ready to do whatever it takes to succeed. 8,000 people whose single goal every day is to make customers over happy. 8,000 человек, и основная задача которых будет делать клиентов счастливыми. Everybody in this room could dramatically improve your income if you did that. Каждый в этой комнате может значительно увеличить доход от предприятия, просто сначала это делать. So half the money Ralph spends on advertising is wasted. Nobody knows. We're checking. So now you got a customer in front of your eyes. In front of your eyes. You got to take care of the customer. But we're rule driven. We're policy driven. Но мы, к сожалению, больше руководствуемся политиками и процедурами компании. Светлана сказал, что миссия компании быть ориентированной на клиента. Если это так, то вам нужно учиться, как, you gotta make empowered decisions. как делать клиента счастливым, как давать полномочия вашим сотрудникам. Ролф любит политики и процедуры не меньше. Rich people want to buy and get out of here fast. Whatever they do, they want it fast. Poor people, they don't care how long it takes. Poor people in Moscow and St. Petersburg probably don't even own a car. They're not your customers. Your customers are wealthy people. They have higher expectations and bigger goals. That's why when I was in your dealership yesterday and nobody waited on me as I opened up all the doors, looked at every car in the dealership, I would never ever buy a car from that kind of a dealership. I mean, I saw a lot of people moving around, but nobody ever bothered to help. Я видел людей, которые там двигались по дилерскому центру, но никто не хотел. But again, my perception is that it's a Tuesday morning and it had snowed out, and that most people would not be expecting somebody to come in and buy a car on a Tuesday morning. Просто удивительно, что никто не ждет, что кто-то во вторник может приехать захотеть купить автомобиль. So I don't know what these people are doing that look like they're well off and they're sitting in every car, opening up the door of every car. No salespeople. Ни одного продавца не заметил, несмотря на то, что сидел. The girls at the front desk are attractive. They're Christmas ornaments. Симпатичные, все украшено. They don't do anything. Но ничего не происходит. I mean, we saw a lot of people walking by. Nobody did anything. Мы видели очень много людей, которые двигались вокруг нас, но с нами так ничего не происходило. See, my perception is that if the front end service is bad, it's probably bad at the back end. И мое мнение, что если на входе, то есть первое знакомство с компанией такого, то скорее всего и в цеху и так далее тоже ничего хорошего. And I'm a little different. When I go in, I like to just buy. I don't like to screw up. И я бы хотел покупать, а не просто ходить вокруг. You know, I I got a new ski outfit on. Monday in Amadi, a new ski outfit. Ski, ski, snow ski. Coat, pants. Snow ski. Snow ski. Anybody here snow ski? So my client Edward Kemp wanted to buy me a new ski outfit. <laughs> So I was probably in there for 15-20 minutes. And then on my long coat that I have, one of the buttons was coming off. So I asked them if they had thread that they could fix my button so it wouldn't come off. They took care of it. They took care of it. So I like to test people. I like to see what the customer experiences. I probably buy faster than most people. I think wealthy people buy quickly. I don't know if that's true in Moscow or not. Do you really think wealthy people go shopping at 10 dealerships trying to get the best price? 
спрашивают, действительно ли люди состоятельные будут ездить по действительным центрам в надежде купить дешевле. Они хотят сделать все быстро. So everybody stand, I'm going to teach you some English. Everybody stand. Repeat after me with enthusiasm. Empowerment. Empowerment. Very bad. Empowerment. Empowerment. Is having. We can do better. Empowerment. Empowerment is having millions and millions and millions and millions of over happy customers. A lot of happy customers. Okay, let's do it again with more enthusiasm. Empowerment is having millions and millions and millions of over happy customers. Placebo, your English is perfect. Our self-image. Our self-concept. The greatest limitations each of us in this room face are self-imposed. It's not your age, your sex, your color, your education. Your success is dependent on you. If you don't control what you think about yourself, somebody else will. Если вы не контролируете то, что вы думаете о себе, это сделает за вас кто-то другой. It could be your spouse. It could be your spouse. Your wife or husband. Okay, это может быть кто-то на работе, может быть. It could be your girlfriend or boyfriend. Член вашей семьи, подруга, друг. It could be your parents. Могут быть даже ваши родители. Could even be your boss. See, when I was young, I took life into my own hands. I grew up poor. I didn't like being poor. So, you know, I constantly worked on building my self-worth and self-concept. I think uh, I attended a three-day course by John Boyle, and it turns out, how many here know the name Brian Tracy? Brian Tracy and I attended the same course. And it worked on self-concept and self-image. This would have been like 1973 or so. I spent $500 on the course. Yeah. Today it could be fifteen hundred dollars. To build my self-concept. You have to take your life into your own hands. I think my greatest advantage is I grew up poor. Most of you probably had greater wealth than I ever had. I just didn't like being poor. So when I, you know, I just wanted to be a millionaire. So I did my first net worth statement when I was 22 years old. Net worth. I did my first net worth statement. Net worth. That's all your assets and all your liabilities. Roman, pay attention. Do you know what net worth is? What's net worth? Net worth. Net worth. Net worth. She's the baby. Bogus. When you were twenty-four. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Was two thousand two hundred and seventy-two dollars. Еще до того, что когда первый раз, когда он действительно заработал свои деньги. I had a goal to be have a net worth of one million dollars by age thirty. I had a goal to have a million dollars net worth by age thirty. Я хотел заработать миллион долларов в возрасте тридцать. Which I did. И мне это очень. But, but again, you know, I, I've had very strong financial goals. So it's really up to you. 
I shouldn't tell you this. But when I graduated from college, I had the lowest grade point average, average of anybody in my class. I just make more money than anybody I graduated with. Your success is in your hands. You got to decide how successful you really want to be. You know, I'd love to hear the story of Svetlana. My suspicion is she constantly was building herself from a young girl. I have no idea. So let me give you one other skill that's really critical in your business. And that's service recovery. Recovery. The words are right up there. Compensation. <coughs> you have to make things right when things go wrong. The guy was promised that his car would be ready on Thursday at 8 a.m. He comes to your dealership at 8 a.m. and the car is not ready. Nobody called him. He planned on his car. He's probably upset. <coughs> Correct? Most employees in the United States lie. They run for cover. They run for cover. They hide. They, they lie. They're not willing to take responsibility. So service recovery creates an experience that's so remarkable the person falls in love with you. And they tell everybody. So service recovery is how do we take a customer from hell to heaven in 60 seconds or less? Do I have this slide? Yes, this one. This one. Yeah, no, no, this one. Uh, different, different book, so. So remember the $25 battery? It costs the dealership over $15,000. I would never ever go back to that dealership. Employees lie. They don't take care of the customer. They know that at Ralph you have millions of dollars to spend every month on advertising. You know that in Moscow and St. Petersburg there's millions and millions and millions of customers. Rich people everywhere. If you lose a few thousand a day and a few thousand tomorrow, who cares? Because there's millions of rich people here in Moscow. And Rolf has unlimited money for advertising. But if you want to know the customer's lifetime value, you have to change and become a customer service leader. So here's the four skills I teach. The first is you've got to act quickly. And 8,000 people need to master service recovery. It has to happen with the frontline person. In 60 seconds or less. So if you have to move the problem up the chain of command, the whole place is going to burn down on you. That's not service recovery. Number two, we've got to take responsibility. It's our fault. I made a mistake. 
Again, in the United States, most employers lie. Aeroflot, your airline right here, cannot spell the word service recovery. There is zero. <coughs> there are about a three on a ten point scale for customer service. In the air, they're nice. In the air, they're nice. But trying to get in the air is a difficult problem. So you got to take responsibility no matter who's at fault. Apologize. Don't place blame on other departments. Thank the customer for pointing out the problem. Don't do what most people do, which is to lie to cover a mistake. Don't, don't point out a customer's misunderstanding. The customer is always right. And then don't pass the blame off to somebody else. And then if you tell a customer, I'm sorry, sir, at Rolf, we have policies and procedures. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. Very explosive. And you will always lose. Now, if you're the only dealership in the Moscow or St. Petersburg, you're okay. You got a monopoly. But I wouldn't be surprised. There are many dealerships in Moscow. And they just say, screw Rolf. And they never come back. You can spend millions of dollars on advertising, and they never pay attention. The third thing is you got to be empowered. I mean, everybody in the dealership has got to be able to make a fast decision in favor of the customer. And then fourth, you've got to compensate. You have to compensate. At your dealerships, you have things that have high value, low cost. Like what? Like what? You got to first explain. You have things that have high value, low cost. У вас есть вещи на дилерском центре, которые обладают высокой ценностью для клиента. You can give away a free oil change. You can rotate the tires. Вы можете предложить какие-то работы или услуги для товара. You can give free loaner cars. У вас имеет минимальную себестоимость для клиента большую ценность. Замена масла, балансировка колес. You need to identify what are all the free things that you can give away that don't cost you a lot of money but have high value. To just say I'm sorry is not service recovery. And if you say I tell you what because we screwed up and your car is going to take an extra week to get repaired and you give a guy a free hat, it's like slapping him on the face. Если вы скажете, что мы задержим вашу ремонт на три недели, на три дня, и за это вам подарим кирку. I'll give you another example. Как пощучно. Visualize you have reservations tonight for dinner at 7 o'clock. Представьте, что у вас на сегодня на вечер заправлен ресторан на 7 часов. You go into the restaurant and the hostess says, I apologize, Vladimir. There's no way we can see you till maybe 7.30. People have not left. How do you feel? So-so, right? And then the hostess says, Vladimir, would you be kind enough to go into the bar area with your party of four and have drinks on us until we can get you seated. Now how do you feel? You're thinking, damn, this is cool. You know, you would have probably had a drink or two anyhow. 
<laughs> so, so let's face reality. The real cost of a drink, whether it be wine, beer, whatever it is, is maybe one dollar U.S. Let's assume all four people had two drinks. Total cost for the restaurants eight dollars. What do you think those four people are doing when they're having those drinks? If that was Roman, he'd be on his iPhone taking pictures and, and putting it on Facebook. <laughs> He's got 5,000 followers that would hear about it. And he's probably going to tell verbally this for maybe 20 or 50 other people. Now he's just one of the four people. Now if I said, Roman, I'm going to give you $2 if you'll tell 5,000 people how great of a restaurant we are, would he take $2? He'd laugh at you. Plus, he's going to come back because this has never happened before in his life. So a car, Kai brought his car in for an oil change and it took an hour longer than necessary. Mr. Scholl, I apologize for the delay. It's all our fault. We looked at our schedule and your tires were due for rotation. So while we were waiting to get your oil change done, we rotated your tires complimentary. So what are the things that have high, high value, low cost? It has to happen by the frontline employee. So bad word of mouth advertising can sink you faster than the Titanic was sink. <coughs> and then the last item is is we gotta learn how to handle IRA customers. We have to learn how to handle IRA customers. You gotta listen carefully. Put yourself in the customer's place. Ask questions that address their concerns. Suggest alternatives. Apologize without blaming. Solve the problem quickly. So, as I close here, you gotta. Your unconscious mind does not know the difference between fact or fiction. It takes whatever you say at face value. So you've got to work on your mind. The other problem is that all of you, are, I assume, are managers of some type. You are all managers. You have people working for you. They all have self-image problems. If you want people to be more successful, you've got to build them from within. People have a cement ceiling over their head, eight feet of cement. So if you want to be more successful as a manager, you got to get your employees to believe in themselves. I had a chance to work with Stanley Marcus when he was alive. He was kind of the inventor of customer service in the United States. He had a chain of high-end retail stores called Neiman Marcus. The highest prices, the highest quality. <coughs> he was known for this incredible customer service. Mr. Marcus said, you have to move this slide. He said, we have to respect our customers. Second, you have to learn to love them. And eventually, you will adore them. 
I'd like to see Rolf do that with your customers. That's how you become a service leader. <coughs> My contact information is here. So if you want to communicate with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, feel free to do so. Marina on my staff speaks fluent Russian. Marina on my staff speaks fluent Russian. So if you have emails you want in Russian, send them in Russian. Her contact information is right here too. And I have a newsletter, both in Russian and English. <coughs> if you'd like to subscribe to the newsletter, just go to my website. Customer dash Oh, there is my website. And then Roman here, stay up. Roman is working with me here in Russia. So if any of you are interested in any of the products or services that I have, you can contact Roman. Мы работаем с Джоном уже многие годы, и это произошло совсем случайно. Мы познакомились с ним в далеком 2013 году, и с тех пор очень много сделали разных проектов. What's your website? У меня есть сайт, на котором есть много информации, конкретно о чем, что делал я и что делает Джон. Меня зовут Роман Дусенко. В любой социальной сети, пожалуйста, или по-английски Дусенко. И у вас есть Facebook, right? You love Facebook. Instagram, Facebook, все что угодно. Я напишите любой вопрос, я всегда всем отвечаю. Моя специализация это стратегические сессии и работа с корпоративной культурой. So I think I was supposed to be done at one o'clock. Is that correct? Yes. And now what are we going to do? Question session. Questions and answers. Yes. Okay. So. У нас есть сессия вопросов и ответов. Do any of you have questions? My name is Alex. Alex. Okay. Alex. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for hey, your, your English is perfect. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you very much for your information. I'm, I'm thinking he's going to be speaking in <laughs> Russian, and all of a sudden he's speaking in English. I'm saying, wow. Yes. Go ahead, Alex. You have to translate. Такой вопрос. Значит, мы часто подбираем себе сотрудников на работу без опыта работы относительно молодых и относительно быстро пускаем их на фронтлайн. Каким набором минимальным там компетенции должен обладать этот сотрудник, прежде чем мы ему доверим там самостоятельную работу, если такая информация у него есть? Или сколько времени надо его там обучить? Ну, понимаешь, минимальный набор вот, компетенций, прежде чем доверить самостоятельную работу. Young people have never been trained in their life on customer service. If they grew up in Russia, they've never seen great service. Their concept of great service is pretty bad. So two things. First of all, you've got to be very careful on the hiring. I don't know about Russia, but in the U.S. people lie. They tell you great things about what they have done. So, you know, one of Steve Jobs' greatest skills and Jeff Bezos' greatest skills is, is hiring of people. They're looking for A players. The second thing I would challenge you is to make sure that you train them immediately on customer service. We have a program out back called Felix. It's the most magic program you'll ever use on customer service. Felix. Implemented in three sessions spaced one week apart. Three to four hours per session. Any of you could be a facilitator at your dealership. The best facilitator will never answer a question. Best. Facilitator will never answer a question. 
фасилитатор в ходе обучения никогда не будет отвечать на вопросы. You just keep throwing the questions back to the audience. Он всегда будет возвращать вопрос, который будет задавать в ходе обучения человеку, который задает. So when you have a brand new car, если у вас есть совершенно новый автомобиль, you get it all cleaned up. Он у вас вымыт, подготовлен. It looks beautiful. Он отлично выглядит. Before you deliver it to the owner. Пока вы не передали это на клиента. Well, you have to train your employees on customer service. Вам необходимо тренировать ваш персонал по развитию навыков качества. You are probably in each dealership adding 10 to 15 to 20 new employees per month. Возможно, где-то 20-30 новых сотрудников на дилерском центре добавляете каждый месяц. You need to train each of those employees on the art of customer service. Каждый из них должен быть обучен искусству клиентского сервиса. And then you really need to train everybody in the dealership. More questions? Yes, Give on the first interview, if the employee does not smile, there's no second interview. <laughs> now in Russia, you may have to go through a lot of interviews. So you're looking for people that love customers. If you tell somebody, I'm looking for an employee that loves customers, the employee says, that's me. Look for their behavior, their attitudes during the interview. At Metrobank, they will interview a hundred people to get one person. You gotta be very careful who you hire. And then uh, we have a program in Russian called Coaching for Success. So one of the problems in Russia is that managers don't give a lot of positive feedback. Часть проблема в том, что в России руководители очень редко дают положительную обратную связь. The attitude if an employee is doing a good job, that's what I paid you for. Why would I tell you? Вопрос в том, что если ты хорошо справляешься с работой, зачем тебе об этом говорить? Я тебе плачу за это. For the women in this room that are married. Дамы в этой комнате, которые замужем. It's kind of like your husband. He says, if I, if you know, I don't need to tell you I love you, you should know it. I don't need to tell you an employee you're doing a great job, you should know it. So people need to learn how to give recognition, to make people feel special, to pat them on the back. You can get ten times more out of people with recognition. So if you develop high-powered people and there's no recognition, they're going to leave. Next question. John, let, let me one minute. Go ahead. Uh, коллеги, очень важно, потому что ну, мы в контент, контенте, все, я хочу вот очень важные вопросы. Я вам говорю, что если вы вдруг посмотрите, там, чем я занимаюсь, я консультирую, я очень много лет э, руководитель, в том числе буду говорить на банках. Почему Джон об этом говорит? А, он привел вам пример компании Метробанк. Компания с выстроенной корпоративной культурой, в которой поддерживается все то, каких людей вы набираете. Соответственно, прежде чем, ну, мы говорим, мол, мы хотим супер людей. Я вам приведу пример, что очень многие компании набирали супер людей, когда эти супер люди приходили в компании, которые не соответствуют тому, чего они декларировали на самом деле, когда внутри он в компании сидит, ему ничего не надо, никто не улыбается, а первый не улыбается, это вы, как руководители, то через какое-то время что с ним произойдет? Он уйдет. Он уйдет, абсолютно верно. Так первое, что нужно сделать, начать с себя. Вот здесь мы нам сказали, что здесь сидят руководители. 
Это очень важно. Я очень хочу и верю в то, что вы сегодня придете туда, как минимум, в своей компании, и хотя бы расскажете, о чем было, а в первую очередь сформулируйте для себя. А вы какой руководитель, какого стиля, каких вы людей к себе принимаете, для того, чтобы понимать о том, если придет человек хороший, он сможет соответствовать тому хорошему, может он полностью раскрыться именно под вашим руководством. А если вы не знаете этого, тогда спросите своего генерального директора. А в целом, атмосфера в компании какая? Почему вчера мы были, никто с нами не здоровался? Кто здесь руководитель роли в химке есть? Вы какой, какой вы дилер, какой, какого, ну, именно, в смысле, в целом роль в химке, да? А вот вы какого, там, какая банка? Управление да? сервисом, Вот, в Митсубиси мы не зашли, вам повезло, мы не ищем, ничего не делаем. Но я уверен, что есть такой же руководитель роль в химке, где мы были вчера, Форд, Хюндай. Форд Балтов. Форд-мотор, да. Три человека шарахались там. Я говорю, Джон, пойдем к этому, как спор, он самый дорогой. 4 миллиона стоит. Может быть, тогда у нас обратят внимание. Мы и так походили, и так походили. Наплевать. Ну какой смысл? Вот представьте, пришел бы к вам в такую коллектив, это хороший руководитель. Я постоянно делаю консультационные проекты с компанией. Один раз мы делали консалтинг в розничной сети. Мы специально подсадили своего человека. Вечером человек, устроившийся на работу товароведом, знал 15 способов воровства. Что это происходит? Это значит сформированные ограничивающие штампы убеждения. Поэтому сначала давайте разберитесь с собой. Вы кого хотите себе видеть, чтобы честно ответить себе на вопрос? Этот человек в вашей компании приживется? Вы сами сможете ему дать эту возможность? Смайл, да, все прекрасно улыбаются. Вчера генеральный менеджер, который подошел к нам в Редис, он сказал, знаете, почему у нас по имени за? Потому что в России это не принято так фамильярно обращаться. Он так удивился странно, как это не принято? Да, не принято. И все, что он делал, так в России не принято, так в России не принято, так в России не принято. Я написал пост в Фейсбуке. Почитайте, если интересно, там мы сняли интервью. Поэтому прежде чем говорить, а каких людей мне нужно, хороших, прекрасных, а мы сами готовы этим людям обеспечить ту прекрасную, хорошую атмосферу, в которой все остальные, которые работали до этого, будут ему соответствовать. Your Russian is really good. Thank you. Okay, more questions. Don? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for this in interesting uh, lecture about uh, the most important uh, topic for us. You know? And uh, uh, I just uh, like to ask you about, uh, you know, maybe as you know, we use Net Promoter Score as a system of customer viewpoint, you know. And uh, system of assessment of customer report. And uh, could I ask you, is it correct in your opinion to pay uh, a part of salary uh, for good feedback uh, from uh, our clients, for uh, for good uh, you know notes uh, about our working? <laughs> Я уже с утра выпил, я вообще не понял. В России так принято. Давайте я продублирую yeah, вопрос. Right. Вопрос был, собственно, правильно. То есть я сказал, что у нас есть система NPS. Да? Мы измеряем, собственно, индекс удовлетворенности клиентов по этой системе. И правильно ли, по мнению Джона, платить какую-то часть оплаты сотруднику за хорошую оценку или отзыв клиента? Мы не платим за нее, мы не платим. Вы не платите за нее, вы а сами не раз не Можно вопрос? Да. Вы сами звонили в компанию и задавали вопрос? Вам звонили? Вам звонили и задавали вопрос по NPS. Мне лично, как ну, конечно, да, конечно. What is your NPS score right now? Uh, something about 80%. 80? Do you believe it? 80. Yeah. You believe it? No. <laughs> а знаете, у меня лично, вот, я в своей компании Автобос, да, uh, у меня лично была история, связанная uh, с компанией, uh, с соседней компанией Автофорума. Я звоню, два раза не докрутили колеса, один раз колесо отвалилось, мне звонят и говорят, какую оценку вы поставите? Я говорю, вы издеваетесь? Ноль. 
Они говорят, а можно выше? Я говорю, хорошо, ставьте 20. То есть менеджер мне говорит, поставьте выше оценку. Я про это и говорю, да? И после этого кто-то говорит, что у них высокие Я и вот я И за это наплачивают. Да, да, Сначала надо пересчитать. I have no problems with compensating them for greater performance and better customer satisfaction scores. I personally believe in the United States all the car dealership scores are full bullshit. Highly manipulated. Do me a favor. I really need your help filling out the score. You're going to get an evaluation in 30 days. Please help me out. So I think in that in the auto industry for the last 20 years, the, the customer satisfaction scores are full of shit. Say, I need everybody to go in your book to page 63. If you have this book, page 63. Put a little mark in your book, you know, fold the page. This is in Russian. And it talks about the customer defection rates and the strategies. Very worth reading. It's about five pages. I found it. Okay, more questions. I think price is very important. I think that uh, there are people that shop for price. They're using the internet. <coughs> so if you ignore price, you're going to lose customers. Remember, there's three ways to reduce prices. Every one of your dealerships has too many employees. Cost you more money to operate. Lacks flexibility. Number two, all of your dealerships have some dead people on the payroll. When you pay lazy people, indifferent people, it costs you money. They also turn off customers. Number three cost is you have crazy rules and policies. How many? I have a question. How many cars are stolen out of your dealerships each week, each month, each month? Each month. 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 How many per month? No, no, no. It's a question about how many cars are stolen from the dealer's centers for at least the last year? For the last year? How many? No, seriously. Zero. How many per year? Per year, zero. Five, maybe. Why are you pissing off all your customers with your security guards? You have a lot of So you don't have them inside the store, you've got them outside the store, and they all look the same, dead. Okay, more questions.
Simon is the only customer. And there was nobody spending any time with me. So, customers know when it's really busy. Know when it's really busy. They don't expect you to spend 30 minutes smoozing with them. На самом деле они не ждут того, что вы 30 минут будете на руках. It takes five minutes to build a relationship. Чтобы выстроить отношения. Three minutes. На пяти минут. Даже трех. Successful people, which are your customers, don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with your customers. Don't want to come in and spend 30 minutes bullshitting with In two minutes, you can make a person feel very special. You don't need 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Remember, you got too many employees. So I don't know why you got two to three girls at the front desk. I have no idea. They don't do nothing. They look pretty. They're Christmas ornaments. No salespeople. Now I'm talking reality. See, I don't trust any customer. I think people lie to me all the time. What people believe happens is not reality. So it's just like the general manager of the Radisson. He was somewhat shocked yesterday when I told him, your employees never use my name. Точно так же, как менеджер отеля верит, что его сотрудники называют клиента по имени, они не называют. See, you've got to constantly train and develop people because they forget about this stuff. Вам нужно постоянно, постоянно развивать и обучать свой персонал. At the Hotel Ukraine, the girls on the 11th floor are very good. They immediately stand up when you come out of into that area. They're very polite. Today they started to use my name. Обычно просто встают, когда ты выходишь из лифта сегодня и начинают называть меня по имени. And and again, I tested the security guard today, and he wouldn't take a picture. And they got a lot of security guards. So we make a lot of excuses. You need to make sure that every single person in your dealerships are trained on the skills and the art of customer service with something new and fresh, virtually every four months. How many go to the health club several times a week? Okay, we got four or five of you only, okay? Uh, I have a bad left knee. And I'm going to have knee surgery at the Mayo Clinic on the 15th of February. So I've not been able to work out as much. But if you don't go to the gym all the time, you gain, you gain weight. You're out of shape. So if you want high-performing employees, you've got to constantly develop. Let me tell you, let me tell you reality. You bring a 24-year-old employee in to work at your dealership. There's no magic program in the world, including mine, that's going to change that person to make them perfect for life. There's no magic oil change or tune-up on a car that will make it perfect for life. Не существует какого-то одного или одной замены масла, которая сделает клиента лояльным. I'll bet your dealership has company-owned cars. Я уверен, что у вас есть автомобили, которые принадлежат компании. And I'll bet you have scheduled maintenance. Я знаю, что есть регламент проведения. The car doesn't say, you know, I really feel good for another ten thousand miles. I don't need an oil change. Автомобиль никогда не скажет. I'm too busy. On the scheduled time, the car goes in for an oil change. In your business, you know what happens if there's no oil changes. Okay, same thing with people. Okay, more questions. Yes, sir.
вопрос такого плана задать. Вот этот метробанк, чьим акционером является Джон Шоу, за счет чего у них такие высокие показатели? У них там много персонала или там мало персонала? Так вот, узнать, вот в отделениях, если их не так много. Много ли людей, то есть если как быстро проходит операция с одним человеком? Do you want to translate her questions to Russian? Or did no? Did every? Yeah, that's right. She said in Russian. Are you translate? In Russian. No, you don't need to. So, the question was, why is Metrobank so successful? Number one, the bank is beautiful. All banks. Look like crap in London. They have ugly doors that you go in. They have uh, glass things in front of the um, the customer. It's a very, your dealership down below here is beautiful. If you had a dealership that looked like one of your local banks, you wouldn't have very many customers in this dealership. Если бы у вас дилерский центр выглядел как большинство банков в России, у вас бы 100 клиентов здесь не было. So when you go into the bank, there's people that smile. Заходите в банк, метробанк, люди. They immediately are helping you. И они сразу начинают вам помогать. That didn't happen here at Ralph. В Ralph это не происходит. You can open a new account at Metro Bank in 20 minutes. Вы можете открыть любой счет в метробанке в течение 20 минут. The typical bank takes two weeks in London. So when I open my account, I get a free checking account. Free checks. Free debit card. And, a, and I have internet access with the password that I have. So I walk out of the bank with my checks, my debit card, 20 minutes. Speed. Maybe I have a question about my bank account and it's 12 o'clock at night. I call Metro Bank and a live person answers the phone. Or maybe I just go to my mobile app. I'll go to mine right now. Okay, it's here. I'm going to print in my four-digit number. And bingo, here's my stuff. The bad news is I don't have a lot of money in this account. If anybody here wants to deposit money into my account, it'd be great. <laughs> I can click it to go to my business account. That's even worse. Okay. So move the money out quick. Um, so you got to make it easy for people to do business with. That's what Metro Bank does, and that's why they're growing 38, 40 percent a year. How in the hell can you go from zero to 19 billion dollars in assets in eight years? That's what Metro Bank has done. We're not talking rubles. So remember, they're going to grow to about 70 billion dollars in assets in 13 years. All built on the customer experience. No advertising. Now, I get a media report every week on them. <laughs> and they're in the media every day. Free. Free. Everybody talks about Metro Bank. They're really good. More questions? Yes, sir. What, give me your first names when you ask Vladimir. a question. My name is Vladimir. Vladimir, Vladimir. Okay. Uh, справки, хочу, вещь, посчитал, немножко. У нас на одного сотрудника в Рольфе выручка на 4000 долларов выше, чем на одного сотрудника в Amazon. Информация. Убил, убил. В Амазон 314 тысяч долларов, у нас 318 тысяч долларов на одного сотрудника выручка. 
Это говорит о том, что у нас есть возможность. Это говорит о том, что у нас есть возможность вернуться, вернуться к клиенту. Это первый вопрос. И про, про 10% сотрудников, которых можно уволить, никто ничего не заметит, я не согласен с этим. Потому что это 8, 800 умножить на 318 тысяч долларов. И про издержки. А в вашей книге я прочитал очень давно, что Карлос Бон хороший менеджер. А после того, как он сейчас попался на налоговых махинациях, он, его зовут убийца издержек. А, и теперь, когда он попался на налоговых махинациях, а, вы по-прежнему считаете его проект-менеджером хорошим руководителем? Он у вас там а, позиционируется как хороший руководитель? Мы не можем убрать 800 человек. Идет игра в том, что Карлос Бонна по-английски Бонн, и все, уже закончился, и сейчас. Many people don't want to report their income. Some people probably go into your dealerships and pay cash. Uh, I'm not sure you can use cash in an American dealership. So, the price is important. So, Amazon has 566,000 employees. I don't, you'd have to divide that by their 180 billion dollars in revenue. Ну, нужно разделить 180 миллиардов долларов на 566 тысяч сотрудников, если мы говорим про Амазон. Again, having four pilots in the cockpit does not improve the flying experience. Мы по-прежнему считаем, что есть большая проблема с численностью персонала, что четыре пилота в кабине и не говорят о том, что самолет улетел. So, I don't know, I looked at your front desk and you had Roman, was it two or three employees in each of the dealerships? If I go into the Lexus dealership where I bought my cars, they have one girl at the front who's really good. She's really good. You would never walk into the dealership and and not be acknowledged. But I walked into your dealerships and nobody did anything. So you can't convince me that it's important to have three people at the front that are Christmas ornaments. Because they still cost money. So high performing people is what you need. If you have high performing people, you don't need 8,000 people. А не просто 8 тысяч людей, вам нужно 8 тысяч людей, которые могут сделать. A guy to study would be Jack Welch at General Electric. A person to study would be Jack Welch at General Electric. Он рекомендует почитать книгу Джека Уэлча, это в свое время представился директором General Electric. He tripled sales and reduced the number of employees by two-thirds. Он утроил продажи и сократил численность персонала. And he's got two books that you could read, Winning and Straight from the Gut. General Electric. Okay, here's a suggestion I have. If you want to become really good at whatever you do, read one self-improvement book a month for the rest of your life. If you want to improve your management skills, read books from people like Jack Welch. If you want to improve customer service, read books on customer service. 
don't read one stupid book and think you got it made. There should be one out of a thousand books. My grandson, who just turned nine a couple months ago, reads two self-improvement books every week. Adult books. I'm teaching him how to become one of the wealthiest young men in the world. I'm working on his mind. I teach him how to invest. His net worth is about $50,000 right now. He's age nine. So, most people read one book a year and they think that's cool. I've been reading a book on personal development, management, sales, everything you can think about. One book a month for the last 45 years. I've read almost every Brian Tracy book. My grandson's read about three or four of them. I sent him the book, I gave him the book straight from the gut from Jack Welch, which is this thing. This is an eight-year-old when I gave it to him. And the reason I gave him the book is he has trouble losing. Losing. No, he when he when he loses something, he's got defeat. He gets discouraged. I need him to learn how to become more resilient. You will never be successful without failures. Jack Welch understands failures. Jack Welch. From GE understands failures. So, build yourself. You know, most of my books are in Russian. I guess Alpina doesn't have my books in their books, or I need to talk to them when I'm out of those meetings. And by the way, if, if your company, if Rolf wants more of my books, I can get them to you at a better price than you bought them for. Better than Amazon? Well, much better than Amazon. We're talking about the Russian so if you want to buy a 500 or a thousand or two thousand of the first class service book, I can get them to you at a, at a better price than you pay in Autobus. And they got them ready to deliver. The 12th edition, by the way. Okay, more questions. Yes. Я просто говорю о том, что Светлана немножко в провокационную тему нам закинула, да, о том, что 50% сотрудников, ну, в общем-то, не очень нужные сотрудники. Uh, do you have less people in your metro bank uh, comparing to the competitors? Um, do your people more... I would say metro bank has probably more employees than the other banks. They do a huge amount of additional business. Uh, they don't have any glass partitions in the bank, you know, for their windows. And they have machines that just give you the cash. They have no security guards. Um, uh, my suspicion is they have more employees per bank, but they probably do four times more business than each of the other banks. Four times more business than Five times, ten times more business. So remember, the average bank increases... Uh, new accounts, 20 to 25 a month per location. Metro Bank is increasing. Metro Bank increases new accounts per location, 570 a month. They increase deposits, 98 million dollars 
per year per location. 25 deposit на счетов открывает обычное отделение. Метробанк открывает 570 в месяц. Banks in the US increase deposits 1 to 2 million dollars per year. So Metro Bank is doing anywhere between 50 to 100 times more than any American bank. The typical American bank increases new accounts 20 to 25 a month. Metro Bank is doing 570 per month per location. So there, the, the volume is dramatically more than any other bank in London. What are, the, what are the factors that help you to be so efficient? Repeat, Olga. What are the factors? I can't hear you. What are the factors? Help you to be so efficient. They help me to be more efficient? Yeah. Uh, you have a camera? We can take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm constantly trying to improve myself. I, I think speed. I want everything done now. I make mistakes. I make fast decisions. I don't have time to screw around. Uh, sometimes I make wrong decisions, but I make decisions. And many metro bank was the secret of efficiency. They, they, they focus on the customer experience. Everybody's good at customer service. I, I send my clients to Metro Bank all the time. I send my clients to Metro Bank all the time. My, client, all the time. my grandson, William, he's got an account at Metro Bank. He's nine years old. He also owns a lot of Metro Bank stuff. Okay. More questions? Does everybody have their book signed? <laughs> okay, in closing, I would like to thank everybody for coming. Take a look at some of our products in the back. Roman, you're going to go back there, right? Посмотрите на книги, которые разложены на столе. Коллеги, давайте сделаем групповой фото. Давай, давай. Выходите сюда. Did we make an impact at Ralph? I hope so. We had about 50, 60 people here, top management. Hopefully they're going to take my ideas and implement them. And dramatically, Alexei improved the customer experience. Check in next year. Leaving Ralph. Yeah, what is your where is where is Savetlana's office? Uh, Alexi, uh, where is Savetlana's office?
Where's our Jaguar? 